It has taken us 61 championship games to get us to this day. And like the roulette wheel, where it stops, nobody knows. Well, now, any discussion of Mayo football inevitably leads to a discussion of just why it has been so long since they lifted the Sam Maguire. So, in an attempt to shed some new light on this, we caught up with a few people with an insight into that Mayo mindset. We're all agreed the curse thing is his nonsense. So the question then is, why hasn't it, why hasn't it happened? Well, I suppose it's just that it is so hard to get over the line after such a long time, you know. Mm. I mean, mm. when, when it is so long, you have to be just definitely more better. Yeah. yeah, you have to be That's your sense, Conor? The best team on, on the day generally wins All-Ireland. I think Mayo, I think Bar 96, have been beaten by, by better teams on the day. Maybe not, you know, you look at 15 and 15 and Mayo might have better players. But mm. on the actual day, in regards to performance and, and not making as many mistakes as the opposing team, I think that's what's probably caught us back to our time in 85 you came down from Offaly with, with, with two All-Ireland medals at that stage and what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you recall about the, those mad years I, I, I was actually flabbergasted yeah. that, that they were so good and so and, and they felt then that they that they, they were going to get beaten in Connacht you know I said to myself sure why, why would you yeah. I mean you had everything going for you and I said it to you at the time if we had Offaly jerseys on these we win All-Irelands every year mm. There's a, there's a very thin line between the confidence and arrogance. But Offaly never lost a run of themselves. Yeah, but, but at the same time, I thought Mayo were the opposite. Mayo looked confident, but they weren't. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, 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 and I, you would I, concur I mean, with that? Yeah, totally. It's, oh. it's compared to my, my team uh, uh, and Sean's team and your team, Connor. Like, yeah. They're miles ahead of us yeah, you know, yeah, they, in, in all respects. And the only, thing, the only thing that they don't have to crown it off is, is, is the cup and, and the medal. And... Uh, Mm -hmm. And there can be no sense that they're not going to get awful close. Their mental resolve is, you know, it's well, there. It's there for everybody. Look, to the see. quality. They're, different, they're a different group. I think so. The yeah. quality is in, in there in the squad, mm -hmm. and they know that. that yeah. You know, they'll know if they perform, they've a lot better chance than maybe we would have had in 04 and 06 of winning yeah. the I think I think it's a lovely place to be. Yeah. You know, I, I used to love this. I used yeah. to love this. Surf it and enjoy it. Oh, exactly. Surf it and enjoy it. And as well as that, you're so fit and you're so good mentally and physically. Yeah. Bring it on. I mean? Bring it on. Bring so can Mayo win it, Sean? I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I, mm. I think Mayo never had a better chance. You know, I think mm. everything is pointing towards Mayo uh, because the underdog tag it's a lovely place to be. Offaly were 6-1 to in 82. Two horse race. Kerry yeah. going for five in a row. I mean, surely if you were playing against Dublin on Sunday, <coughs> you would say, well, they only beat it by a point last year in a mm. replay. We should have won it. Yeah. I think the physicality of Mayo can match Dublin. What did you say, Conor? Yeah, I think so as well. I think they have a great chance. I think, look, at, I think a lot of things have to go right for them on the day. Yeah, it's just a bit of luck as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to need luck. I, I think if, if they have a good start and they're in the game with... Yeah. 10, 12 minutes to go, they'll, they'll, they'll push on and win. Yeah, my, my, my own sense is that they have a massive chance. They don't need to overthink this now. They need no. to just get stuck in yeah. and, and, and really bring it to the master yes, questions. Master you know, get the scores they're supposed to get. And this is their moment now. Uh, and they picked probably one of the toughest ones to win now because Dublin Dublin are at a, at a you know, at a but serious Kevin, standard. Kevin, they're the ones to win. <coughs> oh, they'll be sweet. Oh, they'll they're be the ones to win. Incredibly oh, sweet. They're the ones to win. And I, I think even looking at Mayo against Kerry, Mayo never looked like being beaten That's against true. Kerry. That is, the confidence yeah. that gives Mayo. That, yeah. that really, if Mayo get a run on Dublin on Sunday, well, you know. Watch out. Watch yeah. out, yeah. Watch out. Yep, the thoughts of some high-profile men there, Pat, uh, still trying to figure out Mayo, but you've been looking at Mayo, obviously, as well. Well, we've said it's the same personnel, pretty much. So, are the same personnel going to deliver? Perhaps they are, but they're not going to deliver doing the same thing. Yeah. And I believe they're doing something different this year. Their trump count has always been their strong, powerful running game. Aidan O'Shea taking on Keane O'Sullivan there, Lee Keegan coming off the shoulder. But particularly their strong point is their... Def attacking from defence. Don't know. They've been left off the leash. Lee Higgins, Colin Boyle, all these boys. This is Higgins in, against Russ Common. Lovely pass off this. Again, we're showing another clip here against Kerry. 
Colin Boyd, back in his 45, driving at Kerry, full of energy, and always having a fella, they're good at the running game, a fella coming off the shoulder, in this case, Kevin McLaughlin at a point. That's their forte and has always been their forte. But I think due to the influence of Tony McEntee, I think they've introduced a kicking game. And what was effective with Cross McLean, that diagonal kick pass into the full forward line. Goal here for Mandy Morden. Now here we have Keith Higgins. But what's the difference now? They've created space in front of the full forward line. Keith is kicking the ball more often. Jason Doherty in this playing out in front of the other two boys, showing for the ball. A nice little pass to, uh, to Andy Morden, a dummy to the right, over to the left. Towards the closing stages of the Kerry match, Conor Loftus here, who had a brilliant game. Again, the same thing, half forward line coming out, space in front of the full forward line. Andy Morden makes a beautiful run, shows for the ball, gets out in front of Shane Inright, a lovely 1 2 with Killian O'Connor and a goal. So I think. They're not as predictable as they used to be. And we're yeah. talking about Andy Morden this year. We're talking about the great year he's having. Second favourite for football of the year. Three goals and 21 points this year. Two goals and six points in his last two matches. And why has Andy been so good? I think a lot of it is down to the fact of this kicking game. Before with the kick, with the running game, Andy made runs. He showed, but by the time they released the ball, he was covered. This year, Andy's making the runs, but with the quick delivery and the kick passing into the full forward line, Andy's reaping dividends. So they're doing things differently, and so far, it's been working. But the question, Colin O'Rourke, is will Dublin allow them yeah. to put those balls into space? Well, well you're, you're going to have Keane Sullivan covering across Sweeper, that yeah. half-back line in front of the full-back line. He is the best we've seen at doing yeah. that. Like everybody say, play a sweeper. A sweeper is not just somebody you can throw into yeah, a yeah. game and it's going to work. Look what Kerry did, and it was a complete disaster. But Keno yeah. Sullivan has almost perfected the role over a period of years because not only does he have to know his job, but yeah. all the other backs around him and the players out the field have to know exactly what he's going to do. And if there isn't pressure put on the players farther out That's the, the field, That's then the what happens is you just have an extra man coming through. But if you take the Tyrone game, for example... Mm. The Dublin forwards were ferocious in their tackling back up the field, yeah. Paul Mannion in particular, so it made the job of Keane O'Sullivan a lot the, easier. The other thing about it, of course, is that because Keane O'Sullivan's there, the Dublin backs have the luxury of attacking the space outside the Mayo yes. man. Yeah. So the, what Mayo like to do, two forwards inside now, yeah. space back to the, the supporting players who give them that room, they make a short run and then they make their run, their real run. Normally speaking, yeah. it gets them outside yeah. the defender, but the Dublin defender knows to get outside them because they can't get it inside because the Sullivan's there. And also the Dublin defenders are so quick. Fitzsimmons and yeah. Cooper, they are so quick and, and it, they're so aggressive. It's, a fair so it's very, very difficult. It's a fair point because against when, when Kerry set up against, they had no protection for the full back line, which Dublin do. Dublin protect their full back line. And the second thing was, Kerry put no pressure out the field and the kickers in. Dublin will. Dublin will track the runners. Dublin will put pressure on. So believe me, they won't have an easy game today in that full forward oh, line. Sure. Yeah. OK, right, that's in recent times. Dublin and Mayo have been, of course, two of football's highest profile teams. Both have fanatical fan bases. Both are perennial all Ireland contenders. And the managing managers behind those teams are always under scrutiny. See, I'm very privileged, you know, um, to, to, to have been uh, given the opportunity to, to manage, you know, a, a real band of ambassadors for, 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 for Mayo. You know, not too many managers get the opportunity to be in an All Ireland final, to be there twice in, in, in two seasons. It's, a, it's an enjoyable time and it's an exciting time, and um, looking forward to, to, to the big challenge on Sunday. I have a very busy, uh, busy career and profession with the Irish Aviation Authority. Great, uh, great team of, of, of people there um, working in civil aviation on, on behalf of the state. Um, so that's a great passion that I have, and I've a great family as well, and a young family at home. And uh, my other passion is, is, is sport and, and Gaelic football. And um, you know, myself and the management team are, are in, a, in that very privileged position to be asked to look after a Dublin senior football team. I certainly wouldn't have. Uh, envisage it being a, a nine game journey. The one thing about the qualifiers is that you're getting loads of games but, but it, it does challenge the confidence. Thankfully though for the, the number of games that we've got uh, through the qualifiers has allowed us to sort of rebuild that confidence and um, the team are playing you know the team are playing quite well and with a brand of confidence that you know that we're happy with. 
You know, we respect each team that we play. We don't fear them. Um, but we're humble enough to understand that we have to keep moving forward as a team and keep evolving our game plan and our strategy. Otherwise, teams will, will, will pass us by. So I suppose that's the greatest strength of this Dublin team is, that, is their humility to understand that. People want to want to develop stories about tactics a bit more than than than, than, than really the story is there. I didn't lose any sleep, and that's that, that's honest to God. Um, you know, we spoke with Aidan, the, you know, a week, ten days out from from the Kerry game um, about it, what the challenges were in, and what what we expected from him. And I think in the replay, you know, just shows the quality of footballer that Aidan is, that he was able to to learn from from. Um, items that, that were presented in the in the drawing game and look to address them in the replay. We've got, I suppose, a very maybe intelligent um, fan base, support base, they understand, I suppose, the tactics that the team are trying to play and, and there is no right or wrong way to play uh, the sport and that's the great thing about it from a coaching perspective that you can you can set your team up whatever way you want. But um, certainly there's a tradition there and we're just holding that baton as, as best we can to, 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 to hand it on at some stage to somebody else. You know, not just out of 2016, but out of you know 2015, the play, the guys would have played Dublin, the semi-final, you know, the the finals that they that they played in in 12 and 13. All those years of experience now were uh, accumulating. Um, we haven't, you know, got to the promised land as a, you know, to to say that we've that that, that we've won Sam McGuire or something like that, but. Um, those experiences will definitely help shape um, our preparation going into the game. So it's going to be a fantastic game of football. Two teams that will really go at it, who know each other really well. And um, you know, if there is one consistency of the last few chapters of games, is that there has only been a bounce of a ball between us. And um, I don't think it's going to be any different on, on, on Sunday. But there's a lot of pressure, a lot, a lot of expectation on, on both teams, and rightly so. Um, but for us, it's just, just another game. And, Hopefully we can perform that game. That, of course, Jim Gavin and Stephen Rochford, two gentlemen, Colin Morrock, very settled, staid men. <laughs> well, well they don't sure say anything. Set, they never set. say anything. <laughs> well, when, when we were playing with Mead and Sean Boylan used to say, do an interview, you can say a lot but say nothing. But I think and Jim, Sean was very good at it, by the way. <laughs> he was an expert at it. But I think Jim Gavin has certainly taken it to a different <laughs> level altogether. Because he'll speak there for 10 minutes and you wonder, he doesn't give away anything. You know, he has a, a certain number of phrases. He talks about the process. He talks about the team. And uh, Stephen Rochford has probably come under more scrutiny than any other manager. Mm. Most of it negative for mm. quite a few mm. of the things that he's done, and maybe a bit unfairly so. But, you know, when you're at this level, it's basically the same nearly, nearly as a premiership manager, the scrutiny yes, he got. But Jim Gavin reminds me there, he's a bit like Bjorn Borg, who used to play the tennis. You know, he was ice cool, Old. but he said that there was always a fire going on inside, which he never would allow to be seen by the public. And I think that is, that is a fair and point, And he sets the tone. He sets the tone for the Dublin squad. I mean, Jim's humility is real. He doesn't feel that he's better than anybody else. Everyone else has paid the maximum respect. Why do favourites lose games? Because of vanity. There's no vanity in this Dublin group. We see Dermot Connolly's dropped. A young fella's playing in his place. Dermot's not complaining about that. He just works harder in training. And we've seen that process over the last four years. I use the process, process, process yeah. word deliberately. Because I've never used that before <laughs> on television. Yeah. You listen to him too much. I, I say but I mean, he is the bedrock. He is the bedrock of their philosophy. And they've all bought in. And you meet those guys. They are the most humble fellas. And they pay everyone. But the Joe, I, I, I say, I say, I say Joe McConnelly is complaining about it. But is that good many goals? I would say, go say yeah. you're absolutely right, Michael. Of and I would say that Bernard Brogan wasn't happy that he wasn't put on. But they keep inside. Winning covers a multitude of yeah. sins going on on the inside. It's just the way they're relentless. They're not affected or distracted no, by the game. I mean, Colin Cooper's great line again earlier on this year. What's the biggest problem when you face them? They ignore you. Whether they're 10 points up or 10 points down, yeah. they just keep going. Yeah. It's very difficult to unsettle them because they're not distracted. They're not distracted because there's absolute concentration in the game, and that's the biggest problem. We saw them against Tyrone long after the game was over, going harder and harder and harder. And harder. They don't take rests. Because they're not thinking about the scoreline, they're thinking about, dare I say it, the, the process. process. The, 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 the process. The performance. I should remind Joe and Pat, by the way, we've already had the All Ireland minor final here at Croke Park today, and that was between Kerry and Derry. 
Kerry winning the title for a fourth successful successive year on a comprehensive scoreline. Six goals and 17 points to one goal and eight points. Well, I mean, Clifford started the route. Well, Clifford scoring that particular goal. And indeed, the winning captain was David Clifford, yeah. lifting the minor trophy. Enjoy yeah. that. Oh, it's very enjoyable because, I mean, it, it's an amazing record. I mean, it's the first county to put four minor all Ireland titles back to back. It's now the 15th all Ireland minor competition that they've won. Mm -hmm. uh, their average and, and the last one, of course, in this yeah. grade. Yes, their average winning margin in this year's championship, lads, 15 points. I mean, they've been... I can't, I can't over-egg them too much because Colomel want... A wild lot of it's Clifford. Colomel Col want the county divided into three, for fairness, for, for next year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, does it automatically guarantee that you're going to have seen a success? Not no, really. Yeah, yeah, we I went know. 20 years without winning a minor title, and during those 20 years, we won six all out and seen a title. Uh, but it was a brilliant you, performance. I don't, I don't, I don't think... I don't, I don't think you, like that. There's no doubt about that one. I don't think you should use a great victory in the minors to trivialise what is a very, very important debate about the future of the senior game, ah, Pat. We'll very, very important. Right. So well done to Kerry. Uh, well done indeed. All right, let's go down pitch side right now to join oh, Joanne Cantrell and see who she has got with her. Well, it's an absolutely glorious day down here, pitch side, and perfectly fitting for a senior All-Ireland final or any All-Ireland final. John Mahan and Kieran Whelan are here beside me, and as always, there are rumours doing the rounds. The first thing John said when he came down to join us was, what changes have you heard? So what changes have you heard, John? Well, I can testify and clarify that David Clark is definitely starting and going for Mayo. <laughs> but we've heard about five uh, different uh, selections from both Dublin and... Uh, and Mayo, but I don't think there'll be any changes on the Mayo team. There's a rumour circulating that Paddy Durkin might be starting. I've heard rumours from a Dublin perspective that Ona Garra might be in full forward. Paul Flynn is starting. I don't think Jim Connolly will. But it's all part of the fun, Joanne, part of the occasion. You, people need to talk on a day like today and invariably start talking about teams and making up and throw the, the rumour out there. But it's a bit of fun. I put it to the two managers, though. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Depending on who plays, say whoever plays for Mayo, changes whatever way Dublin approaches. Yeah, well, it not. obviously changes match ups, Joanne, you know, that both teams will set out their stall with particular agendas and, and that's why I, I think Dublin will probably have maybe one change, possibly two, I'm not, I'm not sure, but Who it can think? change. I don't know, I don't know, I think Ono Garra could start on the edge of the square. Paul Flynn apparently has been going well in training, but the thing about Jim Gavin is you hear nothing, you hear nothing and even, you know, the morning of the match, nothing gets out of that camp, so I just think O'Gara because he could change the dynamic of the forward line. Uh, Mayo don't have a recognised full back. We saw what they've done in the semi final with Aidan O'Shea back there. So Keith Higgins has to spend a lot of time on the edge of the square. I think they'd be looking to occupy Keith Higgins and maybe go to a different dynamic in their full forward line because it's going to be a very different game of football who, than who it was lose, against Tyrone. Who loses out though? Very difficult. Poor Night Scully could lose out, you know. And and and, and if he did, if he didn't start, it's got particularly harsh on him because it, will he will he get on? Is the other thing, and he's been there all year. So you just don't know. You just don't know what Jim Gavin what he'll do. And it keeps the managers guessing. It keeps it changes up the strategies. And what it does is it brings a, a tactical battle to the sideline very quickly in the first ten or fifteen minutes. Colm O'Rourke was saying there about how, and we've heard this this year before, Stephen Rochford is the most scrutinised and perhaps criticised manager in the country. Is that true? And what is he facing in Mayo? Is there a lot of support there for him as opposed I think to that? There, yeah, the, Joanne, earlier on the season there were a couple of issues and I referred to that David Clark one from last year. I was standing here pitch side this time last year and that rumour has circulated about... Yeah, David Clark not starting, but uh, yeah, Stephen had a difficult time. Also, we lost a goal in the first game, and we were quite lucky against Derry, and uh, subsequently against Clare, against Cork, and Roscommon. These were games that were going down the home stretch, were in danger of losing. And in that kind of a scenario, a lot of focus comes in on the manager. And in this case, it was, because it was Mayo that was on the brink of losing those games, his decision making has been uh, scrutinised and questioned. But the reality is, he's got the team to an All Ireland final. The county is 100% behind him, and there's a great feeling of uh, anticipation for, uh, right now down in, down in Castlebar, where I live. And I think, uh, as, as Kieran will agree, we're going to have a fantastic game of football because both of them will go at it. They're both attack minded, the two best teams in the country. Mm. And I think if Stephen Rochford managed to get over the line on this one, there'll be a, billion, a monument to him down in Crossman Island. In a word, we know he thinks Dublin are going to win. Do you think Mayo will win? In a word? Yeah, absolutely, by two or three points. Well, we know history is going to be made one way or another. There are loads of rumours surrounding which teams may start. Let's hear what our latest news is from our big match commentator for the 2017 Senior All-Ireland Football Final, Jerk Hanning. 
Thanks very much indeed, Joanne. Yeah, we've been hearing all the rumours as well. But look, that's part and parcel of all Ireland final day. As far as we know, both sides are unchanged. Desi Dolan is alongside me here. Well, based upon what happened last year, when there was so little between the teams after two matches, I doubt very much if this very professional Dublin team will take the Mayo Challenge for granted. No, in fairness, the Dublin team going for three in a row are an incredible bunch of players. In the same time, there's massive, massive motivation for Mayo. First title in 66 years. They have 10 games so far this year in Mayo, and I think they really have been well road tested. But you have to say they're two excellent teams, and it's going to be a massive occasion. OK, let's take a check then on how the teams we think are going to line out this afternoon. Dublin's goalkeeper Stephen Cluxton holds the record for championship appearances. This is match number 91 for Stephen. His full backline has a solid experience look with Philly McMahon and Keanu Sullivan joining last year's man of the match in the replay, Mick Fitzsimons from Kula. At half-back, alongside Johnny Cooper and John Small, is the extremely pacey Jack McCaffrey, who was a spectator at last year's final as he'd taken a year out for his studies. The team's centre field has been changed this year, with Brian Fenton now joined by James McCarthy from Ballymont Kickhams. On the half-forward line, Dublin's transition is best illustrated by the presence of the immensely talented Con O'Callaghan and the equally gifted Niall Scully. It's a first final for both these players. While up front, the pace of Paul Mannion, energy of Paddy Andrews and consistency of Dean Rock looks certain to cause Mayo problems. Where there is now no question or doubt about who's going to start this time in goal, it's all-star David Clark. Fronted by Brendan Harrison, possibly Donnelly Vaughan, but uh, that could change, and very definitely the key component at the back, Keith Higgins. Lee Keegan scored a goal and got a black card in last year's replay, while Chris Barrett and Colin Boyle have enhanced their reputations in this 2017 championship. At eight and nine, Seamus O'Shea and Tom Parsons will be hoping to tilt the balance in Mayo's favour. And just as important to Mayo is their number 11, the towering figure of Aidan O'Shea, unlikely to figure again at fullback, but wherever he does play, he's sure to be a major factor. And the full forward line has been getting the plaudits with Jason Doherty and Killian O'Connor complementing the industry and endeavour of Andy Moran playing in his sixth All-Ireland final match. The teams are on their way out, as you've just been hearing. It's already a third All-Ireland for manager Stephen Rothford. Jim Gavin will be as ice cool as ever before. Mayo are ready for the photographs. The men in charge have done their bit, Michael. Now it's up to these players. Throw-in is less than half an hour away. The Mayo team are out on the pitch. We will be back again shortly with more in our build-up to the 2017 All-Ireland Football Final.
super value are behind the ball. From hundreds of grassroots clubs to the GAA Senior Football Championship. Nothing to be done. Now be reasonable. You haven't tried everything. Ah, it's too much for one man. On the other hand, what's the good of losing heart now? That's what I say. I mean, we've waited too. But never as long. True. When I think of it, all these years... Suppose you repented. Repented what? Oh, there's no need to go into the details. All these years. <laughs> and if he comes now? Oh, we'll be saved. Shall we go? Three in a row. Yes. Let us go. Now, just a few minutes ago here in Croke Park, this year's Jubilee team were honoured. Donegal were, of course, All-Ireland winners back in 1992. And what an unforgettable occasion it was, as the boys from the northwest of the country inspired their first ever championship win. Joyous scenes as Anthony Malloy lifted the Sam Maguire Cup. I suppose that's how you make a breakthrough, isn't it, Colm? Yeah, and, and Mayo could take some inspiration yeah. because Dublin were raging hot favourites on the day. Nobody gave yeah. Donegal a yeah. chance and yeah. they came down and but, they played but, inspirational but type they were, football. They were a flaky Dublin team, Colm, who'd yeah, lost a bit, four different or five breeds. Yeah. games. This team is not <laughs> no. We five, were talking half, earlier on uh, about Stephen Cluxton. And, yes. you know, yes. we've talked so much this summer about kick-out strategies and how much it is part of the modern game. Yeah, well, I suppose Cluxton kicks the ball more often than any other player on the pitch. And the more kicks he gets today, I suppose, it will show that uh, Mayo are doing very well getting scores. But the first kick out, Joe made reference to it earlier, the first kick out against Tyrone set the tone for the game. Over the top to Niall Scully, who fed to James McCarthy, who was fouled on a point. But he can kick them long or short because his accuracy is incredible. Anyway. And I don't think there is a Dublin kick out strategy because... The Dublin, forward, the Dublin players all move and Cluxton can find them. Now, we saw against Kerry last year that he can actually have his kickouts uh, sometimes taken to the cleaner because when that team gets a score, they should then move up and put themselves in a position to cover everyone. Now, David Clark, by contrast, against uh, Kerry had a lot of difficulty with his kick out. Kerry pushed up, you can see five Kerry players in shot here, pushed right up on top and David Clark cannot kick as long as Cluxton. He's accurate enough with the short ones, but if he's forced to kick long, he's kicking into an area where he's not comfortable here. It goes out over the line. Now, if Tom Carson's and Seamus O'Shea and Aidan O'Shea are in the middle of the field, I don't see there should be any major problem. He's good enough at this, but it's playing a bit of Russian well, roulette dangerous. when you, you have the ball going inside the 20-metre the line and backs having to run in for it. So I think that Cluxton has a decided advantage over Clark in the kick-out, even though Clark is probably Probably the best mm. shot stopper in the game. Pat, we'll have a look at uh, your piece of analysis in just a moment, but there are actually changes on both teams uh, we and should talk about before that. Possibly not, expect not unexpected. Certainly uh, not the Dublin team, for well, sure. Well, first of all, with Mayo, um, yeah. Diarmuid O'Connor, sorry, we look at we look here. This this is a big Ono Gara. Ono Gara is in for Niall Scully. Ono Gara brings a different dynamic to this Dublin forward line because Ono Gara brings physicality, brings strength. He's a great ball winner, he's a great target man, and he has a very impressive record against Mayo. And bear in mind, Mayo don't have a natural fullback, and Mayo lack height in the fullback line. Now that it poses the question, they were pre prepared for Kieran Donny coming in full forward, and they worked Aidan O'Shea. Now there's a quandary who can we put on fullback on Ono Gara? But he's a great addition to this Dublin forward line because he brings and variety. change on the Mayo team as well. Well, Paddy Durkin coming in for Dermot O'Connor, there was uh, 
a signal in advance that Dermot O'Connor wasn't uh, fully fit. Yep. Durkin will add power, he'll yeah. pace, and he has scoring ability. He came on and, and scored. And I think a lot of people may all surprised that he wasn't on the first yeah, case, yeah, although well, he is on the first case. He, you know he's, a more, he's a more natural half-back, but he can't fit in because they, have, they don't want to have four attacking half-backs or four uh, attacking backs. Uh, but, uh, but the O'Gara thing, I'm surprised because Scully has, was very yeah. good, I thought, the last season. against Tyrone. But it just shows, again, the lack of sentiment there yeah. is in selection with the Dublin. Well, you've they been are. looking at the Dublin uh, forward division, so does this change what you have to say about it? No, because I think this Dublin forward division is, is, the, is probably the most complete forward line in the country by a country mile. And this... What I want to highlight here is all the qualities they have and the variety to their play. Their movement on and off the ball is unbelievable. And the key to their movement, they're always working the defence, but in particular they're trying to get defenders away from that D, away from the scoring zone. Paddy Andrews in particular, I highlight there, just at the end of the D, very intelligent runner, creates the run, creates the space in the D, D Dean Rock gets into that area, a lovely probing pass a score against, against the blanket defence. Look at the way they set up three guys standing on the sideline. They're stretching the blanket defence. They're looking for a pocket of space. They find the player to get into that pocket of space and he gets the pass. There's certainly very much an influence of basketball coaching in the forward line yeah. where they recycle possession. They're very composed in possession. They recycle. They're stretching the defence. They're working the ball from side to side. And all the while, they're trying to clear that, that D that, and to, they're trying to probe and probe and probe, wait for a runner, wait for a bit of space and go for it. Uh, I, what I like about it, again, their composure, their decision making, the timing of their runs, watch Dean Rock, timing of run, very intelligent run, lovely finish. And of course, the conductor to the attack is Kieran Kilkenny. 62 mm. possessions against Tyrone. He's the point guard, he's the guy that pulls the strings, always playing with his head up, always looking for a player running into that pocket. Again, I like their decision making, I like the way that their team eaters, they're always setting the play up to a fella in a better position. Lovely dummy by Conor Callan and a lovely score. Dublin forward line last year, I felt, I thought they weren't asking enough questions. I thought they were conservative, they were cagey, they were safety first, they were recycling possession for the sake of possession. I think this year they're probing more, they're playing a higher tempo, they're asking more questions of the defence, and the statistics read it all. Last year, their average scoring was 20 points, this year is 27 points. Last year, their average winning margin was less than 5 points. Thus far, they're winning by 12 points. They're a different forward machine this year, Michael. If you saw Colin Morocco a late change in the Dublin attack, you might have thought it was Dear McConnelly. Yeah, but I see him kicking around there with a sleeveless top on him. It's, it's sort of out of keeping with the Dublin philosophy because everybody is sort of part of the team, very much yeah. the same. And there's a bit of a statement by a yeah. man coming out with a different top to everybody else. Yeah. He's not a happy camper. No, I'm surprised that Jim Gavin would even allow it because everybody sticks to the team ethic, which is wear the same jersey, wear the same, yeah. same uh, tops and everything else for the sub. So... Uh, it looks like Dermot has been exiled. I'd be surprised if he even comes on. OK, we'll have to wait and see how that particular one plays out. Joe Brawley, Pat Spillan was talking earlier on about Mayo and he saw a new approach in them and all that. So, Dubliner, of course, are aware of that. So what do they do about it? Well, Dublin are really ready in place to do it. There's the flexibility because of the pace. In Mayo this year, they're playing a diagonal ball into two inside forwards. The, the rest of their sort of outfield players, their half forwards, stay out and they leave this space in here. The idea is a diagonal ball to the wing. It's picked up, the forward can then either take on his man, stick it over the bar, or lay it off to someone who makes a run off his shoulder. So you'll watch they're always positioning themselves. The diagonal ball, Andy Moran has absolutely made hay from this all season. Again, the early diagonal ball, something that wasn't a feature of Mayo's play before yeah. Tony McEntee's arrival. And again, a relatively easy score. But the key is, Michael, that the inside forward has got to win that diagonal ball. And this year, because of the way they're being marked, because of the fact that there's no cover in player, Andy Moran, in particular, has been able to win almost every ball put into him. This changes against the dubs. Watch them last year. So Kane O'Sullivan's the constant presence. Watch Cooper on Moran. So he's going to torture him the whole way out. Means there's no diagonal ball opportunity. Killian, o Killian is in, or Kane O'Sullivan's inside. Again, watch him again. Again, they're trying to find him. Moran's making the run, he wants the diagonal ball, but there's nowhere to get it because the Dublin defender knows to mark outside him because Kane is marking inside him. And, if, and even if Kane's not there, here's Paul Flynn. Again, watch the way Cooper takes off in front of Moran. He's not afraid to take off, he's not going to let him get that ball. And then there's a split second of opportunity to give the ball, and then you can't. 
and now the net effect of that is that the inside forwards from me are out towards the sidelines. The centre is occupied and it's very, very asphyxiated. So it's going to be very difficult for them to play the same way against the dub. The key against Dublin, you've got to engage Kane O'Sullivan. Kerry tried this with Paul Murphy over 18 months experiment. Can he drag O'Sullivan away from there? But the problem is that he can't. O'Sullivan drops back in to cover and one of the Dublin midfielders drops back into his side. I have a feeling he's giving him a, a, a quick uh, 60, <laughs> sec Vaughan, of course. 60 <laughs> second lesson of, of how to handle Owen O'Gara instead of, of, course, yes. instead of yeah. Paddy Andrews. That's, yes. what, he, that's what he's yeah. telling him. And like Donald Vaughan is not a natural full back. He's a, an attacking half back. He's going to concede height. He's going to concede weight. He's going to concede physicality. And he's, he's big enough fella, Pat. He's, he's, he's a very astute and smart man. So I have no doubt he'll cope. Well, I wish him well. <laughs> well one thing, lads, that, that kind of strikes me about all of this, and you're giving your, your very valuable opinions on this game, as you did last year, and we went out and watched the match, and within a few minutes of both the drawn match and the replay, we're firing our notes up the air. But is, isn't that the delightful thing about yeah. these sporting Jesus. occasions? You know, we're, we're here in that brilliant period now for the next 15 minutes where everybody's dreaming about how the game might turn out. Of course. And of yeah. course, who would have thought two own goals? You know, Mayo switching their keeper. Some of the incidents that happened last year were quite extraordinary. Yeah. But one thing I think that we're going to be guaranteed. You know, Oshie McConville texted me yesterday morning. He said, I think this will be the best final in 50 yeah. years. But if we really, Wouldn't that be brilliant? Yeah. If I really knew how to predict the future, I'd stick to, to lot of numbers predicting than, than J oh, matches. Yeah, but, like, the thing about last year, though, and, and, and people say, what's really different this year? I think the, the big difference is while Mayo have improved, I thought May, Dublin all through last year, champion, I thought they were flat enough. They had a 20 minute performance at, in the second in the, half yeah, against yeah. Kerry. I don't think they ever hit top gear. They were flat in the two All Ireland finals that last year. I thought they were there for the taking. I thought that was Mayo's best chance of winning on those two occasions. And I just feel that this year, with the addition of Jack McCaffrey, Conor Callaghan, uh, Paddy, uh, Paul Mannion. And a late start to training, Pat. Yeah, I think there's, there's more of an X factor, there's more of freshness and pace this year. Yeah, by the way, lads, uh, and Colin, there's huge cheering going on out of Croke Park at the moment because the Mayo team has been put up on the big screen. Yeah, yeah well, the Mayo followers, in fairness to them, they are the most passionate, oh, the most vocal. And for a team that has suffered so much and oh, for supporters brilliant. who have left Pro Park so disappointed on so many occasions, yeah, and they come keep coming back and they keep coming back. But the Dublin team is different. I think there's only nine of the Dublin team from last year yeah. starting today. Yeah. And there's 14 of the Mayo players. So what May, uh, Dublin have done, and Jim Gavin, he's introduced more and more new talent. And, uh, and some of the older players have been left on the sidelines. I'm hear... also fascinated, by the way, down the Hill 16 side, which of course is the Dubs. Uh, territory down there, just to the right of it. The Mayo supporters are there as well, but there's a few very brave dogs in the middle of the Mayo support yeah, down there, the, well, and I'm sure they're having the well, best that, of practice. That, that, that sort of conversation, See, might, look, that, that sort of conversation might hold water in a Celtic Rangers derby, but it makes no difference to us. Actually. But, but isn't and, it brilliant? Uh, I mean, last week you had Cologne playing Arsenal, and there was consternation because some of the Cologne supporters had found their way into the Arsenal section, and there was consternation. There's going to be trouble. Police alert. The game was delayed for now. Is there, is there, is there was consternation because 17,000 of them yeah. showed up with no tickets. Yeah, yeah 15,000 without tickets. But it's yeah. brilliant. This is a brilliant atmosphere. Crowds mixing yeah. great colour. This is what it's all about. And also, Colum, what, what Colum has said there about, you know, they keep coming back. Well, I mean, of course the Mayo supporters will keep coming back. If Derry had a run like this, don't forget that regardless of not winning the All-Ireland, no team has given us more brilliant entertainment oh, than the Mayo footballers absolutely. over the last decade. And I mean, I can hardly think of a game that they've been involved in at a high level that wasn't the classic. And just, was, just, yeah. uh, just going back, by the way, to Dear McConnelly, we were talking about his gear there. Uh, it yeah. is, I'm told, part of the official Dublin kit. It's kind of, somebody suggested to me, it's a fashion statement. Which no, is fair enough in 2017. If I had a body like that, I'd be wearing a vest <laughs> as well. <laughs> but, That's a fair point, Joe. To, to, to be completely honest. I mean, isn't, isn't that what the physique of an inter-county footballer is now? I mean, they're, yeah. they're professional in everything but being paid. Of I course, mean, yeah. they're, they're complete athletes. Gee, that's biceps, triceps. I mean, he looks fantastic. Ooh, gee. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, honestly, it's, everybody should wear a vest no, like that. I'm going to get one of those. Day. But it, it, it is... Uh, please don't. All right, OK. <laughs> it's a bit different, though. Like, Dublin teams in, under Jim Gavin sort of are modesty personified. Yeah, right. And they don't have flash... And nope. they don't have showy garments nope. of any kind, so it's a bit unusual for the dubs well, to have that. Yeah, yeah, but sure, no better man, no better man, man in the no. picture that's to do exactly that. 
These are the moments, of course, as we've talked about this before, a few minutes to go before the throw-in of the match. You're going through the ceremonial side and the official side of it all. What, what do you guys really, really have to be thinking about at this stage? M Michael, oh. when you hit the field on our lad and final day, you're in a zone. Yeah. You're in a different but are you world. I mean, how much can you be? I mean, because you, be, you can't be unaware of what's happening around the, you. A, a player that's not in the zone at this stage, <laughs> that's not thinking about his game I know. and the, pro the process. <laughs> he, well, they just want all of this over and to get on with the game at this stage. And the next part of it, gentlemen, is, as we can see here on the screen, we are joined once more again today, of course, by Uthrona Heron, Michael D. Higgins. For Ergona Faril, it's his final year in office as GEA president. As uh, Stephen Cluxton introduces the players from Dublin to President O'Higgin. And you'll notice children from the 32 counties, along with the uh, stars, they're there today and they're they're wearing the club colours of the different players. There's Ono Gara, for instance, been introduced by the Dublin captain. Uh, the skipper, 35 years of age nowadays, we've been hearing earlier on in the programme about all the long the years that Dublin goalkeepers have put in. There's uh, Brian Fenton operating in the middle of the field alongside James McCarthy. And then the children there in front wearing the club colours associated with them, like uh, Kean O'Sullivan. And along the line they go, there's John Small from Ballymon. And then Mick Fitzsimons there, what a great year, Kula have had. So the coolest shirt has been seen here, the red, a little lady there in number four wearing it, and down to Billy McMahon. And now the uh, president has an opportunity to meet today's referee, who's Joe McCullen from the Kill Shamrocks Club in Cavan, taking charge of his third final, introducing Connor Lane from Cork, Corey O'Sullivan from Kerry, both linesmen, and the linesman, the sideline official, Niall Cullen for Fermanagh. Then the umpires, Joe McQuillan's umpires, Kieran Brady and T.P. Bray from Joe's own club, plus Jimmy Galligan from Killy Garvey and Mickey Lee from Drummer Lee. Now it's the turn of Killian O'Connor from Ballantubber, and likewise he's got to introduce his colleagues in the starting 15 for Mayo. Killian, who has scored a staggering 20 goals, 243 points in championship matches. Well, he's been an all-star, he's been young footballer of the year, but there's really one honour he's craving, and that's to lift the Sam Maguire Cup. And he's hoping that these men alongside him, like Lee Keegan there, will help him to do that this afternoon. Their big afternoon. Lovely sunny day here in Dublin. And the children again wearing the colours of all the different clubs. We'll see Shemi O'Shea there from Brafey. Alongside him, his midfield partner today, is Tom Parsons from Charlestown. So the Charlestown colours are also to be seen. And Kevin McLaughlin from Knockmore. And of course, Big Aidan O'Shea. Another brave man, number 11 this afternoon. Dearbud is missing, but in his stead, Paddy Durkin's there. And Paddy is from Castlebar. Jason Doherty, what a year Jason's had. The Borough Shule player. And finally, Andy Moran, he's been the talk of the town for so many, many people who've been discussing Mayo football in recent times. Well, that's the formal introductions out of the way. A time of tension for everyone involved. The president makes his way off. And for the players, whether you're playing your first final or your fifth or your sixth, the nerves affect everyone. It's All-Ireland final day, and the players respect one another. So this is the respect handshake. But uh, they keep on hearing about it all being on the day. That's the message so often which is espoused, performing when the day really comes around. And that day really has arrived now for both of these teams, minutes away from the beginning of the 130th All-Ireland football final. Obviously very colourful scenes here at Croke Park today and as you can see in the background the skies are blue, the sun is shining. It's an absolutely fabulous scene here at Croke Park. I know we say that every time we watch an All-Ireland final day but you never ever cease, I don't anyway, ever to be really, really impressed with this fantastic occasion. Right lads, the teams are about to line up and get behind the band and walk around the pitch. 
So, Colin Moore. <laughs> well, yeah. Who's going to win the All Ireland? <laughs> the sky is blue. Maybe that's a, a <laughs> sign yeah, in itself. Right, it's just green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, good one, right? I do think that Mio are better than oh, Nasser. I think, I think we're going to have the upper game a bit here. <laughs> yeah. They're in better physical and mental condition, I think, than I have ever seen this group of players. Maybe this is their date with destiny. They need a big game out of Aidan O'Shea and probably the game of his life from Andy Moran. But all things considered, I think Dublin have better players over a spread of 21 or 22. And much and all, as I would like to see Mayo winning, I think Dublin are the better team. I suppose, Joe Brawley, that is the general consensus. I mean, obviously, there's a romantic notion to it yeah. for people. But Pat's Kerry team were the greatest football team I ever saw, the greatest forward line I ever saw. But unquestionably, this is the best squad the game has ever seen. Their B team could easily be in an All-Ireland final yeah. today, their B15. And that's the problem that Mayo have. I think that with Jim, Jim setting a template of humility and that they don't have any vanity, vanity is, is what leads to complacency and being distracted. And they just play relentlessly. And I mean, I think Mayo would have to play the game of their lives for 80 minutes. Where are the Mayo subs whenever they need them? I mean, it's going to have been yeah, an extraordinary yeah. achievement for them, but you would say that the, that the smart money has got to be on Dublin. Ah, yeah, there's no doubt about that, Pat. That was Joe. <laughs> I I'm don't know. There's no doubt about that, uh, Pat. Sorry, I, I apologize. Uh, yeah, look, on Mayo, I would dearly love to see Mayo win in Ireland. There's no doubt about it. They're coming into this game, their battle happened, they have momentum on their side, they're hitting peak fitness. The last three games, they were brilliant, they have great resilience, uh, they have great unpredictability about them. Uh, they have a chance. They have to get go toe to toe with the dubs. They have to ask questions of the dubs physically. Yes, the dubs haven't been tested, but at the same time, I will have to agree with the two boys. I think this is the most complete Gaelic football team I've seen for many years. They tick all the boxes. Why are Dublin going to win? I think the key areas are pace all over the field, <laughs> greater scoring threat, greater impact off the bench. And I just think this year, unlike last year, the addition of Jack McCaffrey, the moving of James McCarthy to midfield. Connor Callan coming in, Paul Manning coming in. I think there's a bit of an X factor to Dublin. Just say Dublin, Pat. Just yeah. say Dublin. They're, they're, they're playing a higher tempo. I think Dublin. I think the Dublin. about to throw in, Pat. Hold a minute. Yeah. I think Dublin. I, I can still get another couple of sentences. But Dublin to win, Michael. I think Pat Dublin are going to win. Fair I think that's the general. I just want to say hello to Jim yeah. and Teresa Ring down in Middleton and Cork, and also Tom and Marion Fitzgerald from Clare Morris watching today in BD Wrighty's pub in Austin, Texas. I know I should stay home more, but I was actually in that pub. <laughs> All right, now, a reminder to you that commentary on today's game is available at Skega. Details at rte.ie forward slash sport. Here in our commentary box this afternoon, it is Ger Canning and Desi Dolan. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. There's a sizzling atmosphere in Croke Park as befits All-Ireland Final Day. Really, the, the, the hair stand up on the back of your neck at this stage, Desi. I've never heard such noise. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, well, as a neutral, it's hard not to be overcome. It's truly electric, the atmosphere right now. And for a final like this, you want two heavyweights. And certainly today, Mayo and Dublin are two teams of ex massive experience and massive ability. I noticed that Mayo continued to parade and parade right up to the time the band decided to turn around. They never went all the way down towards Hill 16 for a change. I don't know if that's a, a throwback to what happened the last day when Tyrone didn't uh, complete the, the, uh, the march around, but it was very, very impressive. Very impressive. And the fans now must be hoping that these teams can produce a match worthy of the occasion. The setting is always so perfect, playing conditions look good, and after a championship that promised more than it always offered up, the hope has to be that Dublin and Mayo will give us a game to savour after the anthem.
There's an impressive fly pass there. Everything is up in the air at the moment, quite literally. That looks superb. It's time, however, down on earth to renew rivalries. It's the final of the 130th GEA Football Championship. Will it be a three in a row for Dublin or a first in 66 years for Mayo? The match to be handled by Joe McQuillan, his third All-Ireland Senior Football Final. He's got Connor Lane and he's got Porrick O'Sullivan on the sidelines. Look at this for an impressive setting. It's where you want to be on the third Sunday in September. Next year, it's uh, set to be all changed. We're supposed to have finals in August from here on in. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. Dublin won the toss, and uh, every indication that they're going to play down towards Hill 16 for the opening 35 minutes. Jim Gavin in charge of Dublin. Only one defeat in five seasons in the championship, and that against Donegal at the semi-final in 2014. Mayo ready to do the business. That's their hope. Enormous pressure on all of the players concerned. Biggest day of the year in football. One of the biggest days ever in their lives, in their footballing lives. John Small ready, along with Conor Callaghan. Ready for the start of the match. The eights and the nines are ready to go at it. And in fact, it ends up being number 11, Aidan O'Shea, who gets the first possession. Leaving it off here towards Kevin McLaughlin. Trying to set up a scoring opportunity early on here for Jason Doherty to fire it in. But away to the left-hand side. First opportunity falling to Mayo, failing to avail of it. He's had a very good year, Jason Doherty. Yeah, and Aidan O'Shea continue with his trend of winning every throw up so far this season, but Jason Doherty will be disappointed with that shot. Dublin's kickouts once again successfully completed as they go short. The Dublin goalkeeper, his record of the championship this year, so impressive. 86% of his kickouts have worked out. And when you give it to Jack McCaffrey, you know what you can expect as he takes off. Down to the opposing 45 metre line. In here as far as Brian Fenton. Back to Keanu Sullivan. I'll be able to patrol in front of the full back line usually, along with Johnny Cooper. Once again, it's Jack McCaffrey. Dublin looking to try and dominate the early exchanges here, impose their will on the game as they did against Tyrone in a very one sided semi final a couple of weeks ago. O'Sullivan again threading it in here towards O'Callaghan. He's been the boy wonder of football this year, and he shrugs off the attentions of the backs, goes in and scores! What a start after a minute and 25 seconds! Another brilliant opening goal for Dublin, superbly converted by Conor Callaghan. What a player this lad is! Yeah, great run by Conor Callaghan, straight at the heart of the defence. Colin Boyle was marking him since the start of the match, couldn't get near him, but that shows the composure of this guy in a brilliant finish. The best possible start for the champions. And once again, Mayo have to start an All-Ireland final and come from behind. Fenton. Kieran Kilkenny getting his hands on the ball. Nicely supported here. Always able to move forward. John Small scored against Mayo in last year's drawn All-Ireland final. Back out as far as Dean Rock. Cooper. Total domination by Dublin so far. In as far as Paul Mannion. So elusive, so quick. All the way back to Andrews. A left footer this time from him. And a first wide as well. Wide a piece. But that goal still has the crowd buzzing here at Croke Park. Yeah, and it's a full court press by Dublin so far. See Johnny Cooper. All the players are pushing right up and putting massive pressure on the Mayo team. It's with Tom Parsons now. Mayo trying to establish some little bit of mastery here in this game. Had one attack already. Jason Doherty firing it wide. McLaughlin. A couple of players coming together. One of them was O'Gara, the other was McLaughlin. Tom Parsons chipped in towards Andy Moore and two against him. They know his danger. And out comes Mick Fitzsimons. All the way out as far as Paul Mannion. Came very deep on occasions as well in the semi-final match. Fenton. As the season has gone on, his game has improved immeasurably. Into Ono Gara, late change. O'Gara coming in for Niall Scully. 
O'Callaghan laying it off to McCaffrey. Down he goes. Referee says he he's going to hold the play. Thought he was going to allow play got, to continue. I think he got a bang on the leg there as Keith Higgins came in. And there's not much in that. It's hard Did to see, see it. Compton? Yeah, no, it's hard to see it. But again, you see Conor Callaghan there. Possibly Steph. No, a lovely finish. Great finish. It really was. Second goal of the championship, scored after five minutes against Tyrone. And in under 90 seconds here, getting the opener in the All Ireland final. They're happy. Yeah, and it's a killer start for Mayo. They would have liked to set into this game nice and early. You know, ask questions of this Mayo team or the Dublin team, but certainly a start like that is brilliant. And Conor Callan continues in his brilliant form. Well, Jim Gavin has had the courage of his convictions to come in and promote young players like O'Callaghan. I guess it's easy when you've got a player of such immense talent. You consider that uh, he's already won an All-Ireland Trap Hurling final with Kula, and under 21 football as well. So he's going for the third one here, and this doesn't look at all good. Yeah, well, with Con, I suppose you expect players to take a year or two to gel, get used to the setup, but he's come into the team immediately and made a massive impact. Jack McCaffrey, the one about whom there is quite a degree of concern now. Yeah, it's hard to see whether there was contact or not. It didn't look like there was contact with Keith Higgins, so it's an unusual one. I have to say, I didn't see any contact. But again, a player who uh, spent most of last year away, furthering his studies. I think he was back in Ireland by the time the All-Ireland final came around, but he wasn't included for the All-Ireland party, so it looks like it's going to be Paul Flynn who will yeah. be uh, coming in very shortly for his 51st championship appearance. Yeah, Jack was incredible in the last day as well against Tyrone, so he'll be a loss. Referee's got to throw the ball up, so there was no foul, no free kick given. Mayo win it back, having made the worst possible start. And it's Aidan O'Shea who's back there trying to lead the way. I guess if we've got to concede a goal, you might as well concede it early on, because we've got an awful lot of time to repair the damage. Kevin McLaughlin, quick look up, two against four inside. Andy Moran races out to get it. Quick look up. Good score by Moran. Yeah, and that's what Andy Moran has been doing all season. And I've marked Michael for Simons myself. He's a tough, tenacious defender and great play again by Andy Moran. One of his colleagues was able to hold off the back that time and give him sufficient space in which to get the kick in. So Mayer are off the mark. And this time the kick out is attacked quickly should have been Mayo's it is eventually Donny Bohan has got it they're attacking in waves Bohan taking the return pass Bohan kicks another one two in a row yeah. it's a bit like last year's drawn final where they or the replay they conceded four points then got the next four yeah well that's what we've seen time and time again with these Mayo lads not going to lie down but that came from a poor kick out from Stephen Cluxton he's going long a lot of the time Luxon, brilliant kick all the way to Conor Callaghan. That's a fantastic kick out. All the way in here towards O'Gara. Looking for options. Back towards the 21-year-old once again. Making his way past Parsons, giving it back out again. Intended for Kieran Kilkenny, but the eagerness and the determination of Mayo is very evident there. And it's Colin Boyle who gets it away. Slips it inside as far as McLaughlin. On as far as... Aidan O'Shea, back once again to the number seven, and Bill Boyle feeds it in, once again into Andy Moore, he's got one, three men against him, Keanu Sullivan trying to get the hand in to try and win that ball back, they're trying to slip it in over Mick to Simon's head, back goes Johnny Cooper, Cooper gets the ball away out as far as Brian Fenton. Yeah, the Mayo supporters aren't happy, but I think myself, the ball was there to be won, but again you see Andy Moore out in front, I think in last year's final, Johnny Cooper picked him up. Paddy Andrews, back around his own 45 metre line to pick this one up and give it out to James McCarthy Philly McMahon change of direction Andrews once more pitch in very good condition in spite of the very heavy rain we had here in the Dublin region last night Small down into the corner here where Mannion goes over, he's pushed fouled by Paddy Durkin free kick awarded yeah, and I suppose it's an unusual for Paddy Durkin to find himself playing back in the corner. He definitely put the hands on the back there, and it's an easy free-in. Change has uh, now been made. Yeah, and Paul Flynn has been a massive servant for us there in a row, but he's, 
he'll make a big impression his physicality there's a lot of talk before the game that he might start as well so no surprise he's in but uh, if there was a change if there was talk about him coming in before the game it was hardly for Jack McCaffrey no certainly not no and I, well I suppose that just gives you an idea of Paul Flynn's versatility he can play pretty much anywhere tricky free kick for Dean Rock out here for a right footed kicker about two metres in from the Kazakhstan side the distance from goal is about 50 metres now let's see if he can make it dropping away to the left hand side off Mayo hands a 45 instead probably about as much as you could hope to get from that because it really was a tight angle for him yeah and a difficult angle yeah for a free taker it's surprising maybe the likes of a Paul Lemanian might not stood up and take responsibility for it it's very difficult for that angle in the old days uh, Desi Stephen Cluxton would have been brought up there with that left boot he scored 47 yeah. points in the past but in recent times Jim Gavin I think has decided he's not going to be taking I, them I think if you look at Dean's record he probably gets over 90% of his shots so it mightn't mean much of a need three goals and 24 so far this season and 20 points of those are from freeze he's got 3.45s already converted in this just championship looking for a fourth here light breeze into his face perfect day for football so a deep intake of breath and he says he has uh, modelled himself on Johnny Wilkinson well, that one isn't the best didn't have the greatest of luck in the drawn final last year either but he got nine points in the replay yeah. So it stays at a goal to two points. And that's the thing about free taker Jer, I suppose for the first one being so difficult, he probably might be better off giving it and going playing short because it put a bit of pressure on his second one and that was a poor kick as well. And all of a sudden his mindset might change, his confidence might dip a small bit. David Clark with the Mayo kick out. There's so much talk about kick outs and Mayo goalkeepers in recent seasons. This one is one eventually because in there is Jason Doherty foraging he managed to pick it out there with three Dublin players near him ball's going to be brought forward 13 metres for a little bit of indiscipline Lee Keegan's going to take it in as far as Aidan O'Shea oh, soloing almost caused him a little bother there but he managed to hold on to it Durkin's available Paddy Durkin has come in as a late replacement for Dermot O'Connor who's been troubled by hamstring problems in recent times and hasn't recovered sufficiently and that spilled by Kevin McLaughlin into the challenge there came James McCarthy bottled up yeah and it's getting physical Jar all around the pitch to see players getting involved with scuffles Dean Rock playing it on very very quickly here on as far as Paul Flynn all the way across here towards O'Callaghan it's a difficult one for him to contain line ball yeah I suppose two teams that know each other so well they're not going to give an inch it's exactly what you expect Killian O'Connor way back there to link up with his goalkeeper early stages in the final it's uh, always promised to be a fascinating prospect and so it has turned out so far 10 minutes since Dublin got their goal Paddy Durkin getting it out here towards Tom Parsons now he's got open space in front of him Flynn's in front of him doesn't challenge him Cooper comes out fists it away from Jason Doherty good play again by Johnny Cooper does so much immense good work back there out to Brian Fenton can carry it on and gives it away rather poorly to Colin Boyle all the way up as far as the unmarked Killian O'Connor who took his eye off it yeah and a massive opportunity for Killian he was in 30 yards of space and that opportunity if they got the ball and held on to possession it was a good, good, good scoring opportunity surely this is all down to nerves yeah I would imagine it's a little bit of nerves but like there's so much at stake and both sets of players are, want to make everything right initially and it's a big day for these both sets of players Dublin will build again from the back through Philly McMahon taking it up James McCarthy new role for him this season he really has adapted to it terribly well play there of course for Ballymont Kickhams as a centre field player showing his pace Parsons goes after him gets the hand in does well and that's the kind of hard work the grafting that you've got to do if you're going to win the championship Keith Higgins suddenly there's a gap suddenly there's a support player outside him it's Kevin McLaughlin able to crack it looking to try and tie it up here Full recovery made by Mayo. And what a score. What play by Tom Parsons. Great heart, great energy. And Keith Higgins driving up the pitch. 
brilliant play and a, a fabulous finish then by Kevin McLaughlin that'll lift the crowd so similar to the replay where last year Dublin got the first four Mayo got the next four great catch by Aidan O'Shea very good spell this for Mayo they've responded and reacted very quickly to that Dublin goal Lee Keegan put, put them in front here under hits it and Kieran Kilkenny let Lee go for a split second and he got up the pitch he should have scored in that opportunity Brad Fenton this time much more careful down as far as Con O'Callaghan Dublin haven't scored for 12 and a half uh, minutes in this match but they've got a chance coming up here now because O'Gara oh just past that ball intended for Andros but he's gone back to try and pick it himself on O'Gara and to kick it over the bar at the end of all of that if he can and the umpires aren't sure so they're going to go to Hawkeye yeah and again we mentioned it about nerves and it's unusual for two teams at this level but certainly a lot of ball handling errors at this stage and Owen O'Gara when he, the subsequent shot went to pick it up he struggled to pick it up and he put himself under pressure I think the sun is, the sun is in the eyes of the umpires down at that goal at Hill 16 I think that's probably why the umpire didn't make wasn't absolutely certain because okay. it's well in as you can see yeah well it was a surprise I suppose the supporters generally give you an idea from the hill but not on that occasion so He'd be happy with the score. So Dublin take the lead once again. Dublin a point to three points. And Nearly think, a quarter of an hour gone. And I think as well, throwing on O'Gara in there is upset very much the Mayo back line. They're all over the place. Players are marking players that hadn't planned on and a good tactical move by Jim Gavin. It was strongly rumoured last night that he was going to start, but there are always rumours. Middle of the park right now. It's picked up here by Keith Higgins. Ready to go again. Aidan O'Shea has got his hands on the ball quite a bit in the early minutes looking to be the dominant factor of this game once again having a difficulty with uh, soloing that hasn't ever scored in an All-Ireland final Tom Parsons again looking around Durkin ready to make a run Parsons holding Durkin now cutting inside wrong footing a couple of Dublin defenders but the finish does not have his usual polish and assurance yeah, and that's two good opportunities Mayo have missed and he would have expected he had time he could have brought it in a small bit further and knocked it over the bar Tuxton straight down through the centre nobody picking up Paul Flynn on his shoulder here he's got O'Callaghan Boyle is going after him out here as far as Dean Rock under hitting it again and David Clark able to make the save yeah, the sun is a factor there for the goalkeeper and for the defenders during the opening 35 minutes Shamey O'Shea yeah I think Dean will be disappointed with that dropping it short that's his third miss but again coming from a long kick out from Stephen Cluxon he's going long an awful lot today Mayo quite comfortable just building up in a nice relaxed fashion then putting on the injection of taste down went Boyle yeah it's a heavy tackle from Paul Mannion and he'd do well to get away with a yellow card here yeah, I think you see he went in with the feet. Yellow card. First yellow card of the match, we would imagine, and it's for Paul Banyan. A bit early to be picking up a, a yellow card like that, only 17 minutes into the contest. Yeah. Well, Colin Boyle's a tough man, in fairness, he gets up and gets on with it. But Mayo are doing well, they've settled into the game after that early blow. I'm sure older Mayo fans were probably thinking back to 2006 and 2004 before that when they were pretty well hammered by Kerry in those finals this time it's Jason Doherty showing assurance, giving it off here to Andy Moran they've had some good link up play this year in the championship but it doesn't end with a score and it's already a third wide by Mayo and Kevin McLaughlin picking up good ball great ball in there from Jason Doherty out in front of Johnny Cooper and Andy were disappointed with that since the form he's in John Small has made that uh, centre half back position very much his own since the Leinster final taking that return pass now an opportunity to belt it in inside towards O'Gara fisted away from him however by Donny Vaughan and out comes Paddy Durkin so far they've handled most of the difficult uh, moves that Dublin have managed to put together Again, the referee sees an off-the-ball foul, brings the play up to the 45-metre line. And it's Aidan O'Shea on Killian O'Sullivan, and I think Aidan is marking him pretty much all the time, but he wants to take him on at every opportunity. 
I think Dublin fans will be quite disappointed the fact that they made such a wonderful start to the game got a goal after just under 90 seconds haven't really built upon that so far yeah well not to forward Dean Rock has missed a couple of opportunities Owen O'Gara has gone on the score sheet once but certainly you would say that they've missed some very good opportunities Johnny Cooper is on the ground meanwhile Killian O'Connor kicks and puts it over yeah, and I mentioned there's a bit of stuff going off the ball and certainly Mayo manoeuvred that where Johnny Cooper ended up on the ground. Team's level once again. Cooper ended up on the seat of his pants, pleading to the referee. Play continued and O'Connor put it over. Yeah, and we're watching Stephen Cluxon here and he has to go along. Mayo putting massive pressure on that kick out. Into the centre where it's two against two and Tom Parsons clutches this one. You see them, they're, they're playing with a bit of confidence now and a bit of a swagger. Aidan O'Shea, again full of ideas, lots of movement, drilling it inside, great angle runs being made by different players. Andy Moran looking assured. That's another, he's got two. Yeah, and his movement gives him an extra yard of pace. It's just incredible how he moves. He's such an intelligent player and he'd be delighted with that finish. It's early in the final, but they've already got uh, five scores on the board. Watch this again here. That's what happened there, and that's where I think Johnny Cooper ended up on the flat of his, well, the seat of his pants, I think it was. Yeah, well, I suppose what you're saying is two teams so familiar with each other, and I can remember last year's final, I thought it was a very physical game in both encounters, but Joe McQuillan will have his hands full. Like both players know in the dark arts, they know how to get away with things, and certainly they're trying it out today. It's uh, looking like a big test for his team this afternoon. They haven't had too many of them so far in this year's championship. This time the referee, by the way, is going over and he's having a word with his linesman, Connor Lane, who's informing him, I think, as to what may have happened. And there could be a little chat between referee and one of the players. Yeah, I think he's telling Philly McMahon. <laughs> That's the pull on. Next kick out about to happen. Dublin goes short, out as far as Mick Fitzsimons, pressurised by Andy Moran, Johnny Cooper, Kean O'Sullivan, down towards Paul Flynn, trying to take it in his stride, but he's challenged vigorously by Shami O'Shea, and you can see they're absolutely going to give Dublin nothing. They will have watched the semi-final where Dublin absolutely lorded it, and occasions Dublin's movement and speed is bewildering, and here's Flynn. Off towards O'Gara. Now, can he make the necessary headway? That's a foul on Paddy Andrews. That's a free in. It's one thing that uh, Mayo cannot afford to be doing, giving away free kicks 30 metres out. Yeah, that's a poor free to give away. Donald Vaughan shouldn't have done that. Careless. D uh, Dublin were struggling to break them down. They hadn't plenty of numbers back, and he just lunged in there and silly free. Pushing the back, really quite meaningless. And an important kick now for Dean. Well, Dean has had a couple of uh, chances. One very difficult free, 145. This one, just about 25 metres out, should be his first point. Makes no mistake. So once again, the team's level here. Dublin 1-2, Mayo 5 points. Tight, intense match so far, 22 minutes in. Mayo, by and large, giving as good as they have been getting. David Clark, looking at what's on, decided to go down through the centre again, but it's cut out here by John Small, and the referee saw a foul by a colleague. Think about it, James McCarthy. Yeah, a little block there on Aidan O'Shea, and the referee was right on it. Colin Boyle, driving forward once again, the left half back of Mayo off as far as Kevin McLaughlin 45 metres out it towards Andy Moore and he's winning another one here they can't get tight enough on him can he finish the umpires have a look at it and wave the white flag oh, and he's got three yeah what an opening half for Andy Moore coming into this game Jim Gavin would have known he's the main threat for this Mayo side and it's a great return three points in the first half of play the kick out down the middle and Mayo won it again what's happening to the seemingly perfect Dublin kickouts time and again it's Mayo who is seizing on them from Shane O'Shea it's kicked in there towards Jason Doherty they can do little wrong at this stage yeah 
again all coming from Stephen Cook's and kick out but that's the hard work of the Mayo full forward line putting massive pressure on it forced them to go along and a brilliant score from Jason Doherty the where for now for Dublin who's uh, Jason Sherlock ran in immediately went up to Stephen Cluxton and had a word with him is it to be a little bit of variation it is this time out to the wings to Brian Fenton kicked back in here to his midfield ally James McCarthy space in which to manoeuvre down towards O'Gara but that's hit rather indiscriminately and Colin Boyle is able to get onto it quickly Aidan O'Shea is picking up a pile of ball about 40 metres out from his own goal He's yeah, that extra man the whole time. I suppose though. they're trying to keep Keen O'Sullivan in position, Dublin, and by doing that, they're letting Aidan O'Shea drift out the pitch and get on plenty of ball. Donal Bohan, two against three inside, one for Killian O'Connor to compete with, but it's eventually Keen O'Sullivan who does emerge with it. Out to Paul Flynn. McCarthy once again. They've belted a few balls down into the uh, Goldmount area, intended for O'Gara. Hasn't won them very much yet. So they're going to build up in a more measured fashion with pace and Small deciding to kick we know he can score and he's done it here yeah, and he's done it in last year's final as well he's a player that has improved his game immeasurably but I would have to say the Dublin forward line as a unit aren't working right now it's a one point game Mayo leading Keith Higgins once more they're able to start from the back and the Dublin forwards aren't really getting tight enough on the ball carriers out of their own 45 metres zone yeah it's very easy for that full, for Mayo half back line to get out and create other attacks again we see Paddy Durkin driving down the wing here a certain amount of what Dublin were doing to Tyrone in the semi-final in this it's Mayo this time however who are able to carry it forward pretty much do as they will Chris Barrett towards Andy Moore and this time the Dublin hands get there first and Simons gets it out but only as far as Barrett again Aidan O'Shea looking up summing up what's on for him cutting inside and cutting past Kieran Kilkenny who's been largely anonymous in this game so far back it comes to Andy Moran Mayo having much the better of it but only leading by a point and the possession of that goal after about 90 seconds the big factor so far in Dublin's favour that they're still there and I'm just looking to every single Dublin player bar Owen O'Gara is back in their own half right now not what you associate but they're doing what they have to do Keith Higgins a lot of possession now is there some product at the end of it it's Tony Vaughan cutting in Doherty was an option decides to go against that option but now it is given back to Tony Vaughan once again from Durkin was there a foul there by Johnny Cooper referee was very close to it emerging was Paddy Andrews the Mayo fans thought they were going to get a free kick instead their team are back under pressure again with Conal Callahan kicking it down to Dean Rock Rock advancing, O'Gara trying to make an angle for him, Rock deciding to go at himself superbly done tight angle but he's got a second point, the first to come from open play and he's tied up the match again level for the fourth time in this fight yeah and Donald Vaughan will be disappointed with himself lost the ball in possession, Mayo supporters are calling for a free, didn't think so myself but Dublin on a quick counter attack did very well Lee Keegan's been spoken to so a card out and he fears the worst and the worst on this occasion is a yellow card yeah, there's a bit of off the ball pulling there with Karen Kilkenny and he'd be disappointed to pick up a yellow card. Of course, he didn't finish last year's game. So 1-4 to 7 points. David Clark has gone pretty long with most of his kicks so far, feeling there is some benefit to be uh, gained. John Small now. And uh, Killian O'Connor there as well. John Small, the one who gets it. Yeah, John Small, I suppose, again, a good physical player, but lots of that going on all over the pitch, Jerry. I don't know what the boys did particularly wrong to pick up their yellow cards. Could be earlier incidents that were brought back to the referee's attention some minutes after they happened. David Clark down through the centre again. Aidan O'Shea is the target, touches it down to his brother Shamey, and the older brother takes off and gives it to Lee Keegan. Booked a few moments ago. Small's after him. Inside to Killian O'Connor. Holds it. Billy McMahon is marker. A Shamey O'Shea. Feet were out, ball was in. Dublin fans appealing for a line ball. Killian O'Connor all the way back to Tom Parsons. Two men on the other side, totally unmarked. 
Breaks kindly for Jason Doherty. Gives it off here as far as Kevin McLaughlin. Into Andy Morlan. Being careful about each pass. Trying to deliver it perfectly. Trying to pick that perfect moment to kick a point. And they do it again. And once more it's Jason Doherty. Second of the day for him. The full forward line right now has scored six points from play. Yeah, and what you're seeing is great composure from the Mayo team. Dublin have numbers back, but at the same time, Mayo are very patient in their play, moving the ball around and finding the right option. From the kick out there, it was in came Bohan, then Aidan O'Shea challenged. It was James McCarthy who caught him. Referee gives an advantage to Mayo. Tom Parsons carrying it on into Jason Doherty. A couple of players in support of him here. Shami O'Shea is one of them has the power and the determination to get it in there into Killian O'Connor, kicking on the run, but it runs away from goal and Andy Moran can't keep it in. Fourth wide. Yeah, again, well won possession around midfield. Stephen Cluxton not happy with his performance, I'd say, so far. They all seem to be dominating around the midfield. Again, the referee. Now he's going back for an earlier foul, which was by James McCarthy. He'd, he'd allowed an advantage for that. And the uh, referee... Out with another yellow card. Yeah, he's he's partial to yellow cards as Joe McQuillan, I have to say. There have been a few. Cluxton belting it away down, giving it away again. This has happened in the past when Dublin have been playing Mayo. He's had some bad moments, Stephen Cluxton, with his kick out. This one works out, however, because eventually Dublin are able to win it back. I think the movement, Ger, is not out the pitch right now. There's not much movement from the Mayo or from the Dublin midfielder half back line, creating opportunities to get rid of the ball. Paddy Andrews has the ball stolen by Chris Barrett. And you know, before too much longer, you begin to get the feeling that Jim Gavin on the management team will start looking at that very highly vaunted substitute bench. Here's Kevin McLaughlin. Runs away from him, caught there by Kean O'Sullivan, and the referee gives the free to Mayo. Yeah, and Keane O'Sullivan would be very happy to give that free away because Kevin McLaughlin was gaining ground on him and he knew what to do, pulled the arm back, a definite free in. This is the steal earlier on there. Yeah, and great play by Chris Barrett, he's having a brilliant season. But again, as I mentioned, the forward line of Dublin as a unit haven't been flown. This, I think, is the first free kick for Mayo. Killian O'Connor has scored once. I mentioned all the Dublin subs. The Dublin outfield subs today on the programme have 326 championship appearances between 10 of them. So there's an awful lot of <laughs> awful lot of experience there. Yeah, and we haven't seen all, too often this year Dublin in an uncomfortable position going into half-time. Certainly Jim Gavin will be looking at that bench and seeing what options he has. They all need to take their chances, and that's not one of them taken. It's gone astray. Yeah, Killian O'Connor will be very disappointed with that it's a free you never see him miss look at the who's who of Michael uh, Dara football. Bernard Brogan Tyler won't Brogan. be happy he didn't get on the last day absolutely Jeremy Connolly and of course Jack McCaffrey is a big loss as well so. sure is Mick Fitzsimons as far as John Small they would be quite happy if the Dublin side have to start from a deep position and work very very slowly because they were able to get a lot of bodies back suddenly it's Philly McMahon trying to break the press Lee Keegan in as far as Kieran Kilkenny that's a bit better from him holding on strongly vigorously challenged over vigorously challenged free kick no question about it the referee could bring the ball forward 13 metres but uh, doesn't do so in this particular yeah, instance. It looked like the ball had been lost by Kieran Kilkenny, and it was very physical play. But you would say it just seemed like the ball was lost, and the Mayo supporter certainly didn't agree with that decision. Free kick anyway to Dublin, and Kilkenny to take it. Back here to Kieran O'Sullivan. He's won All Ireland medals in three different positions on the field. Looking to win another one this afternoon. Conor Callaghan hoping to win his first senior All Ireland medal after a great start to this match. Into Flynn, able to give it back to him. Back to McCarthy now. Once again, O'Callaghan, a lot of passes. O'Flynn eventually deciding to have a go, but misses it badly. And it stays Mayo in front by a point with about uh, two and a half minutes or so to go to half time yeah and defensively Mayo are set up very well today but massive pressure on the kicks and every forward wanted to get a shot away it was only Paul took it on and disappointing effort off his left boot well Dublin will feel that in the second half they will have the wherewithal to 
get things together yet. Only a point the margin. Shami O'Shea. Andrews chasing after him. Goes all the way back to the very experienced Keith Higgins for whom this is a 61st championship appearance today. Out to Colin Boyle, whose game has got better and better all through this season. McLaughlin so energetic. Feeding it forward to Doherty, who's got two points so far. Not the greatest of passes to give to Killian O'Connor. There were too many dubs there. And Brian Fenton eventually comes out with it. And there's nobody at all on Paddy Andrews. And now Dublin could break quickly. Looking to get another point and tie up the match. Fenton. Mayo get the bodies back well inside the 45 metre line. John Small taking it on. Here's McCarthy. Once more, Conor Callaghan. Such a long time since he got his one and only score, but what a score that was. That brilliant opening goal. It's Johnny Cooper who's decided to join the attack. On O'Gara. Held back. Cooper again. And then eventually, a couple of bodies colliding. Chris Barrett, one of them with Andrews. Referee says there wasn't a foul. As to coming together of bodies, so double and play on. No free kick. Kieran Kilkenny threads it in, turns right towards Mannion. Steny stumbles over, trying to bend his body to take it up. And it's Shami O'Shea who comes out with it. Still Mayo leading by eight points to 1 4 8 7. Tom Parsons heading close to stoppage time at the end of the opening 35 minutes. Where Mayo will be very, very pleased with the way in which they have recovered from the body blow of such an early goal conceded. Yeah, they're growing in confidence Just. in defence. The more times they dispossess that Dublin forward line, they're growing in confidence. But at the same time, Dublin have plenty of options in there. Take it forward here by Keith Higgins with three minutes of injury time to be played. Killian O'Connor kicking it up here into the sky. He's missed a free a few minutes ago. Cluxton takes it down. Back out as far as Keane O'Sullivan. Dublin once again looking to try and rediscover that kind of methodical style of theirs that they showed earlier on in the championship. John Small now. All the way down towards O'Gara. Held off there by Brendan Harrison. And Harrison does well against Owen O'Gara. There was a foul. Free kick to Mayo. And the referee's got to bring the ball forward. Yeah, four ball in there. Brendan Owen O'Gara Harrison. starting his first championship match of the season. I have an idea. He also started the championship match against Donegal back in 2014. The one day that Dublin don't want to be reminded of. Yeah, and I look at there is Owen O'Gara. But it's not nice to watch. There's the hand in the face there. And the referee must have missed that one. Well, it might be brought to his attention. Aidan O'Shea back deep he's worked very very hard in the opening 35 minutes against Brian Fenton here holds on gets a support player with Keith Higgins on his shoulder Mayo trying to finish off the half now maybe with the last scoring opportunity O'Shea business like as ever Parsons Boyle moving freely slipping it back inside here to Killian O'Connor taking a return cracking it with the outside of the boot and putting it over the bar Colin Boyle Yeah, and that's how, again, we've seen from him. He's an incredible player. Two times all-star, but on the outside of the boot, brilliant score, and that's one way of putting Con O'Callaghan on the other foot. That was a brilliant team point, you know. Several players involved, and Colin Boyle taking the responsibility and having the confidence to have a go from 30 metres out. Dublin in a spot of bother. Down by two. Yeah, and it was a brave call for Jim Gavin to throw in Ono Garrett, but I think right now the full forward line for Dublin isn't working as a unit. John Small, down it comes to Kilkenny. Oh, he clashes with his own man, Paddy Andrews. Surrounded immediately, and the referee then blows for a free kick from Mayo. Yeah, yeah you see it there. Jordan, two players blind, very unusual, but... Again, he was being bottled up, and Joe McQuillan gave a free in there. It's a free into Dublin. Thank yeah, you free into Dublin. He's not happy. I don't blame him. It's puzzling. Well, we played the three minutes of added time, but uh, the referee will allow an extra few seconds. That's his reaction to that.
couldn't believe it. Yeah, and it's not too often you see Stephen Rochester getting animated on the sideline. But a big kick for Dean, and an important kick going into half time. It's just inside the 45 metre line. Knightbury's against him. Mayo fans are one bit happy with that because they felt, if anything, it was just two Dublin players colliding. And they're puzzled by the referee's decision. But it's made now. And Dean Rock, who's got two points already in this game, one of them from a free kick. The Bruce and the jeering ringing in his ears. And Joe McQuillan looks like he's going to book Colin Boyle. There was a little bit of off the ball stuff went on, but it was a lot of players were involved. And he's picked out Colin Boyle in this instance, but I kind of feel myself that there was a lot more than him involved. It's uh, a yellow for him. So the two wing backs on paper, at least five and seven, have got booked by the referee for Mayo. Yeah, and a little bit of gamesmanship going on here with Andy Moore. He's standing right in front of Dean's line and. Well, he's got to be back the requisite distance. That goes 30 metres. Dean Rock then composing himself, as you say, Desi. An important kick for Dean and for Dublin. Just before half time, gets it up into the air with accuracy and with ease and puts it over. Yeah, and that shows a real sign of a quality player. Lots of pressure all on him. The boys are encroaching on his space and a brilliant kick and great play by Dean. It's a one-point game as they go in at the break at the end of a very eventful first half of the All-Ireland Football Final. We had a superb goal after just 90 seconds or a little under by young Con O'Callaghan from Kula and Dublin. But then Mayo came back, took the lead several times. Dublin have responded and that last point there by Dean Rock, his third of the first half, means there's just one between the teams. At the break, it's stolen 1-5, Mayo 9 points. We're back with Michael and the panel right after this. You read the game better when you've all the facts.
half time in the All Ireland Football Final of 2017. And as it stands, Mayo leading Dublin by a single point nine points to one goal and five points. When the lads came in towards the end of that first half, there, Joe Brolly said, Now we're sucking diesel. Uh, well, this is more like it. And, you know, may have been absolutely emphatic. Kieran Kilkenny's been taken out of it. Cluxon has been forced to kick long and the kick out has disintegrated with the way Mayo were playing zonally out there. The diagonal ball's working very well into the Mayo forwards. Andy Moran scored three points, but in general, it's so full blooded by Mayo. Mm. The tackle and the number of great interceptions, and in general, Mayo have been the better team and they've got the bit between their teeth here. And obviously, we can't overanalyze the column with only a point in it. And, and I mentioned something before the match, way back in the programme, the date of the replay. Yes, it's looking like that again, and I suppose after a minute of play, we thought, here we go again with Mayo giving away a goal. But they've played, I think, with a control ferocity for most of that first half, and been much the better team, uh, as far as I'm concerned. The worry for them is they're only one point behind. But Dublin don't look up to match speed. Maybe all those easy games haven't been good for them, and Mayo are playing with a calmness in their approach, and in many ways they've stole Dublin's clothes. They're keeping the game wide. They've forced Cluxton into kickouts. Joe was saying Kieran Kenny is not an issue in the game. Brian Fenton. So what they have done is nullified all the main players on the Dublin team and have been very good going forward. Like they scored brilliant points from play. Jason Doherty and Andy Moore, great again. And we asked the question, can they just keep up this, this relentless yes. pace? Yeah, that's what they have to do now, Pat. I mean, they lead by centres of margins, but the question is, can they drive on? And they've been in this position before Correct. winning. Yes. You know. Now, bear in mind, the last time that Dublin got beaten this year was in the league final. And Kerry gave a template that day of how Dublin can be beaten. And, and, and Mayo have just carried on with the same template. Yeah. Mayo today... Like in the league final. They're hammering the hammer. Cluxton's kick out. He's missed in the first half. And only took seven long ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Cluxton's kick out. Working the sweeper, Keno Sullivan. Keno Sullivan is not the same mm -hmm. in front of mm -hmm. And the big thing, who's the conductor, who's the pint guard of that forward yeah, line? Kenny, Kieran yeah. Kilkenny, Lee Keegan nullifying it. All the best football all was played by May on that half. When you look at some of the stats, Dublin forward scoring one point from play in the first half. Also the one point from play in the first half. I mean, that's. But also, you, picking up on your point, Pat, about how you know full blooded Mayo have been, you can see the difference in that with Dublin's very slow build up. Mayo are going 100 miles an hour. Of course, Dublin are in their back foot largely because of the kickouts, but, but there's no doubt a difference in attitude. But I it would is agree. time for us to take another short break here on the programme. Now, straight after that, it is our Sunday game competition and your chance to head off to Chicago. Super Valley are behind the ball, from hundreds of grassroots clubs to the GAA Senior Football Championship.
the game better when you've all the facts. We've teamed up with Aer Lingus, Ireland's only four-star airline, to give you the chance to win a five-night holiday to the Windy City, Chicago. You'll jet off in style with Aer Lingus Business Class Service and be treated to a four-star stay at the Sheraton Grand Chicago, located in the heart of the city. And to make it a trip stateside to remember, there's $5,000 spending money for your pocket too. For your chance to win, answer this. The city of Chicago is located in which U.S. state? Is it Illinois, Alaska or Hawaii? To enter, call 15 17 71 71 82. That's 15 17 71 71 82. Or text the word GAME, followed by your answer and name, to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost €2.03. Euro and three cent. Calls from other networks may be higher. Viewers in the North can also text to 57001 or call the number on screen. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, September the 18th. Full details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions, where the lucky winner will also be revealed. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we saw Amelda May in Las Vegas at the McGregor Mayweather fight. Today, she is here with us in Croke Park. Just as exciting and a little bit more real, I suspect. And still now, a reminder of the halftime scoreline in the 2017 All Ireland Football Final. Mayo leading Dublin by nine points to one goal and five points. By the way, the most impressive thing, or one of the most impressive things for me in Croke Park here today, is Joe Brawley's cufflinks. Show them the cufflinks, Joe. Because I just want to mention, I gave a pair of cufflinks to Joe yeah. a couple of weeks ago. I haven't seen them since. Never got but, them back. <laughs> but those are the cufflinks of the former president, vice president yeah. of the United States. Joe Biden, but the reason that I got them was because Get he, rid of you. He, he turned the sod on yeah. the first ever Mayo Hospice last Tuesday, which was a magnificent day for us, and Joe has been kick-starting the fundraising for the hospice, which is badly needed, and also for one in Ross Common. So, uh, I mean, I was so delighted. They just said I wanted well, to have these. Joe, so. seeing that you lost my cufflinks, well, would you ask them for another pair while you're at it there? <laughs> Listen, uh, we've yeah. we'll been talking positively about Mayo Cotton, yeah. but yeah. they did yeah. start off this match in the worst possible way. Yeah. And, you know, Dublin, uh, it seems from Mayo that they're not going to die wondering anymore, but Con O'Callaghan's brilliant young Turk, he just waltzes through Colin Boyle left brilliant. in his way. Now, he does take quite a few steps, but... Again, he chose like the class of this man. He's the young footballer of the year. Maybe he's the overall footballer of the year. Takes on the Dublin defence because Dublin weren't doing this. They have been very ponderous in their build-up. Yeah. And he side foots it away. Colin Boyle not able to get back near him falls and side foots it into the corner. And it was about the only time he, he went at the defence. John Small has come up and gone at the defence. But we haven't seen I anything the of the, We haven't seen this Dublin pace coming from deep yeah, at all. Ronan no, O'Gara's no, 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 not working. But you're right when you talk moment. about the pace, because once Jack McCaffrey went off, that X factor that he brought to Dublin this yeah. year, that huge pace between transition into transition, between defence and attack, is now gone. Paul Flynn hasn't struck it up well at midfield yet, yeah. and Ono Gara has been a major is it, disappointment. As you spoke, as you spoke about uh, Stephen Cluxton's kickouts, and this has yeah. been an important fact yeah. after the first well, half. Well, Mayo went after Kerry's kickouts, and they've been brilliant at doing this in the latter half of this championship. They've completely annihilated his kickout. He took seven long kickouts, Mayo mm -hmm. won six, and what's their positioning? Cross McGlynn used to do this under Joe, Joe Curlin. They would play a zonal look along there on either side of the midfielder, forcing them in. And they've won so many of these. And in fairness, there's not a male player who's shirking his duties today. Six out of seven. And most of these, are, four of these were returned for scores. The net effect is that Dublin are being hemmed in and Mayo are coming at them in waves. It was, of course, the nightmare against this Mayo team is to allow their half back, back line to attack you, which is precisely what is happening. But what, what, what Mayo have done is that they've got into Dublin, you know, they've got under Dublin yeah. skins, they've got at them physically, and you know, you can see Dublin are a little bit, unsta un I agree un un a bit unsettled, and I agree with Colm at the staff, I think the fact that they got no test up to this year's cha championship, and I think... Colm, this yes. man is on the pitch, yeah. and uh, uh, Kevin McMenamin is also on for O'Nogara. I'm not surprised, Absolutely. it was a mistake put He's on, on by the way, for Paddy Andrews. I'm Andrews. surprised yeah. that yeah. O'Gara started. This is a game made for Connolly. 
he'll have something to prove. But the Dublin subs have to come on to win the game for Dublin this this time. Yeah. Normally they're coming on as a mopping up operation yeah. and looking good. They have to really play this time. It's it the is. first time, Michael. It's the first time since Dunny Goal in 2014 at half time where a Dublin team has been rattled. Now, they haven't been rattled to that extent. But there is no doubt that they are rattled no, here. No, they were rattled last year in the semi final against Kerry. And Kerry, do you remember, Recently. had a, had a Recently. purple spell before they half did. time. Dublin came out reorganised in the second half. But like I said, Mayo are really up for it. You can't beat their resilience. You can't beat. They played all the football in that half. Nine they have no subs, Pat. That's they have the no subs. Nine points from play. Yeah, Column, in, in the semi final, we saw. Jim O'Connolly coming on, a showboat appearance yeah. uh, at the end of the match simply because the game was over at that stage. This is significant. It is because oh, yeah. the only thing about it is lack of serious so match practice. Now we all hear about the ferocity of the Dublin A versus B games and things like that. But this is a different thing to yeah. come on in All-Ireland final and Dublin under pressure. They're lacking that composure that we normally yeah. see, with, see with them. The calmness on the field yeah, is not. best exemplified by Mayo. So, uh, Dublin are now turning to Connolly in, the, in their hour of need. But, but yeah, they have we been saw under, Bernard Brogan, by the yeah. way, sitting on the bench there as well. Yeah, like they have been under the cosh many, many times, yeah. Dublin. And always they have eked out the victory. Always they have eked out the victory. So I said it at the start, Mayo with this 15 who are on the pitch now, they're going to have to play the 40 minutes of their lives now in this second half to win it. All right, lads, if you want to hear more from the panel after our coverage today, you can join them and Sarah McNamara on our Facebook page. So do watch out for that. Right now, it is time for us to head back to Jerk Hanning and Desi Dolan. Thanks, Michael. No changes from Mayo, but uh, Dublin have sent for the reinforcements. And as you've been hearing, they've sent for the reinforcements probably earlier than they anticipated. And when you look down through Jim Gavin's subs list now at this stage, you're seeing Bernard Brogan, maybe Michael Darren McCauley, who's played very little football for them this year. Not an awful lot else where forwards are concerned. This is it for Dublin. This is it for Mayo. Second half about to get underway. Dublin trying to restore their supremacy. Mayo trying to reaffirm their status as champions in the making. 35 minutes to go, and maybe a little more the way football goes nowadays and that's grabbed by James McCarthy straight away and he's tripped now that could be very very serious yeah. the referee last play continue yeah. all the way up as far as Paul Mannion and Mannion gets the second half underway in whirlwind fashion by knocking it over the bar almost nonchalantly and once again the, time, the teams here are level. Yeah, great score with Paul Mannion, and that instance, great play by James McCarthy. Won the throw, kicked it in quickly, but I suppose Aidan O'Shea will protest that it was an innocent exchange. Well, he got away with it. That's the main thing from a male point of view, but uh, in the past, well, we know what would happen. Black card stuff. Paddy Durkin. Back as far as Chris Barrett. Down here to Colin Boyle. Back to Keith Higgins. Durkin once again raiding. Trying to cut past Fenton. Succeeds in that. Now will he kick it himself? Turns it back here to Aidan O'Shea. Back outside. There were two players waiting for it. Jason Doherty takes on the responsibility. I'm not sure he was anticipating getting the pass. He's missed it anyway. Yeah, but that was a great opportunity for Mayo. And they have missed a couple of opportunities that you should, would expect him to score in the last couple of minutes. And, and that kick out again is attacked there this time by... Donny Boham getting there first Michael Fitzsimons Kilkenny getting the ball forward as far as Paul Flynn it was the first of the subs to come on for the injured Jack McCaffrey first touch for Dermot Connolly can he be the major influence that Dublin are looking for played so little football since that Carlo match John Small all the way in won immediately by Mayo they control it Higgins simple little pass out to Shami O'Shea given off to his brother then to Killian O'Connor who's played very deep in the early moments of the second half O'Shea once again to Tom Parsons this time challenged by Connolly off goes Aidan O'Shea once again Flynn his nearest marker opting against kicking it lobbing it instead inside here for Doherty three against him lays it back outside difficult one for Andy Moran to get to James McCarthy and the referee has blown the whistle and it's got to be a free hit. Yeah, there was a slight tug of a jersey there, but may all be delighted to get that. There wasn't a whole pile of contact, but you can see he gets the ball here, picks it up, and there's a very slight stretch of the jersey. Joe McQuillan gave him the free on that. 
just one free kick in the first half for Mayo in a scorable position and Killian O'Connor missed that one well this one is uh, a great deal easier you'd imagine just outside the 13 metre line attention be given to Jason Doherty there by the uh, team doctor Sean Moffat and the physio coming in as well Martin McIntyre just to have a little look and I think myself, Jason Doherty's getting on a lot of ball. He's been very influential for Mayo this year, and he needs the necessary support that Andy Moore requires. But he would be a big loss if he struggles with that shoulder. Peter Burke there in consultation with Stephen Rochford. Tenth match in the championship. This, of course, for Mayo. So they are battle hardened. Killian O'Connor kicks it over. No problems. One they needed. Yeah, and that's the first score that Mayo have got from a free today. The nine points before that, that's the first free. And Mayo back into the lead again. Short one as far as Johnny Cooper. Coming to take it and move the ball forward, James McCarthy. Conal Callaghan made such an explosive start to this match. In case you joined us late, he scored the only goal after just under 90 seconds. Philly McMahon back once again to... O'Callaghan just holding up the point of the attack waiting for Keon O'Sullivan to come forward down into space towards Mannion good quick layoff brilliantly done Dean Rock getting past Barrett kicking and making sure lovely start to the second half for Dean Rock a fourth point for him and once again these teams are level in the All-Ireland final yeah, but Dublin looked to be a little bit more fluid in the second half in the first couple of minutes, getting the ball in. Paul Mannion out in front and a good score by Dean. Tom Parsons. Rolling it back here towards Keith Higgins. Shamie O'Shea, ready to take off again. Way on the left-hand side, he's got Donny Vaughan, ignores him. Tries to cut inside past Fenton, doesn't succeed. Good play by Brian Fenton, the Rohini player. Helped out by Kieran Kilkenny. Rarely touched the ball in the first half, Kilkenny. Connolly, second touch for him since coming on, all the way in here towards the other half-time sub, Kevin McManaman. Where he goes, Dirk will follow. McManaman kicking, and his confidence is high, and Dublin have got another one. Yeah, and they can bring in players like Kevin McManaman, an instant impact, and that's incredible. Great play, took on his man, great finish. Dublin lead by a point. Keith Higgins into Parsons. Well, they knew what to expect in the third quarter of this match. Very often the moving quarter. Didn't always happen like that for Dublin in the last two All-Ireland final matches they played against Mayo. Donny Vaughan. Very short. Shamie O'Shea. Chris Barrett. One sub that Mayo have still in reserve is Dermot O'Connor, even though he's been troubled by hamstring problems. Could come on could play for 20 minutes and could make a, a very fine contribution Aidan O'Shea and the referee says he took too much out of it Three to Dublin yeah and Aidan was ponderous on that occasion it's very slow with decision making Dublin had plenty of numbers back but all of a sudden they're on the counter again the pendulum had switched in Dublin's direction but that kick has been intercepted O'Connor gives it back to Shamie O'Shea Two men outside him, one of them is Brendan Harrison. Into Colin Boyle. Able to cut through here, give it to Jason Doherty. O'Shea again now, quick hand passing back to Lee Keegan. Looking for Kevin McLaughlin. Straight away a wall of yellow-shirted players in front of him. Gives it back once more to the Westport man, into space, but there's nobody there for it except Nick Fitzsimons and Johnny Cooper. Able to help it forward through Kieron Kilkenny. Once again, Dublin players exchanging passes here. Five, six passes inside their own 45-meter line to work it forward to O'Callaghan. Ready to take off. Able to get it past Shamie O'Shea. Held on to well here by McManaman, who's already got a point since his introduction. Going to try and crack another one. Will he make the difference between the teams in the end? Not with this finish. First wide of the second half. Fourth and all for Dublin. And, and, by a point. and these counter-attacks are coming from poor play for Mayo and that's a couple of opportunities that have failed to break down the Dublin team so far they need more runners from that half-back line coming through fascinating battle on here at Croke Park Dublin trying to win three in a row first time that a Dublin team will have done that since the 1920s Mayo you well know about over three decades since they had their hands on Sam 
They go long, down towards Andy Moran. Two, three Dublin players around him, given off, Darty, oh, straight at the goalkeeper. Crucial moment of the game, you might imagine. Jason Darty, stymied, but he gets the ball back again, gives it out. Free, it's a free in for Jason Darty. Free in for 30 metres. Well, yeah. there was a goal there. there what an opportunity, take. and what play by Andy Moore, and he picked up the ball. One-on-one -on -one with Stephen Cluxton, he would have expected to score it. And a good height for Stephen, that's the only thing, and a great block then by Philly. But they got something out of it to get a free out, but it was certainly what an opportunity for a goal. It'll level up the match here, but that w could well be one of the most crucial moments in this final. It'll be Killian O'Connor to take it. Just pointed one, started the second half. Similar position, they need a similar result, and they get it as well. Yeah, and that's the one thing about Andy Moore, he stays deep. He stays as an option all the time. Won the ball, laid it off well, but a great save by Stephen Cluxton. He's an incredible keeper. It was powerfully hit. Goalkeeper just got down brilliantly. They go short. Mayo retreat. Don't squeeze the Dublin backs carrying it out. John Small this time. Unlike in the first half, they are retreating Mayo somewhat, allowing Dublin to carry the ball forward. And Fitzsimons willing to do so. Andy Moore putting in a challenge. Johnny Cooper went down momentarily. Back on his feet again, the referee is awarded a free kick, which Brian Fenton takes. In here, nicely gathered by Paul Mannion. He's in the clear, Mannion, there's another goal chance. Well stopped by goalkeeper Mayo, David Clark this time. Mannion again, trying to get something out of it. He might yet, he gets the point. Yeah, and what an opportunity for Paul Mannion but two brilliant keepers we have here today Paul, Steve, Stephen Cluxton and David Clark but David Clark did extremely well and nicely tidied up by Paul Mannion but again one of the best shot, for, shot stoppers in the business is David Clark comes off his left leg resourcefully done so the Dublin goalkeeper the Mayo goalkeeper have saved their teams we're 10 minutes into the second half it's anybody's match Dublin shading it at this stage making the brighter start to the second half having been a point behind at half time Shamey O'Shea trying to go by John Small trying to force him out there's always a support player it's Doherty back into Aidan O'Shea changing the direction of the play through Parsons and Brendan Harrison Colin Boyle Staying on his feet, getting away from McManaman, giving back into Parsons, avoiding the challenge there. Brian Fenton, back to Aidan O'Shea. Oof, Paul Big Boyle. Hit. That was a hefty challenge. Oh, oh dear. Donny Vaughan then came in with a wild blow. Yeah, it was reckless from Donald Vaughan. Very high. They do well now. First of all, John Small's on the ground. John Small has already had a yellow card in this match, but it was Donny Vaughan immediately after that. Yeah, and you see it. Colin Boyle gets the ball as he turns. John Small comes in extremely hard. Very physical, right in on the chest. Now, and that then, could have been a yellow card. Yeah, if it very wrong, easily. He'd have been off the field because he's already got one. Yeah. But then Donny Vaughan comes along. Yeah, reckless. And an All-Ireland final jerk to do something like that. Like Rick. Don McKillen would have dealt with the John Small incident. And for Donald to come in, it's very careless playing in, in, in such a high-stakes match. Real rush of blood to the head. And he must fear the worst now at this stage as the referee and his two linesmen, Connor Lane and Forrick O'Sullivan, are having a chat about what they have seen. Yeah, big calls here. Really big calls. Yeah, it looks but like John Small is going to pick up a yellow. Well, if that is the case, Dublin will be down to 14. Yeah. Donny Vaughan wondering as well what his fate will be and the Dublin manager stoically looks on yeah very careless like Donald the decision was made by the referee and do you know that's the second, second yellow, yellow yeah. card so that follows a red have. and he's off we have to deal with Donald now I'd imagine and this could be interesting well he has to deal with it there's no yeah. doubt about that and he is going to deal with it and Donny Vaughan now fearing that it'll be another red well he'd do well to stay on the pitch for striking an opponent he knows it's red <laughs> referee had no choice yeah, and a hot ball as well Jared. just a double whammy 
It's 14 against 14. Yeah, they're not helping themselves in this instance. Very poor play. Now, who, if anything, does that benefit? Uh, Dublin losing a centre-half back. Mayo losing a very resourceful, mobile number three, but he's really not playing number three. Yeah, well, Donald Vaughan is such a mobile player, an experienced player. It's picked up by Kieran Kilkenny. Up here as far as Conor Callaghan. Plenty of space in front of him. Supported here. Fitzsimons trying to get to the end of it. Ball ran away from him. Mayo pick it up again. Lee Keegan kicks it out. Out to Killian O'Connor. Away through Tom Parsons. Forward by Aidan O'Shea. And it's anybody's All-Ireland final. Jason Doherty. Big, huge one down. They can't keep it inside, however. And instead it's Stephen Cluxton. Andy Moran couldn't reach it. Dermot Connolly can. Back up here as far as Kevin McManaman. The Dubs been put to the pin of their collar to win three in a row. Mayo fed up with all the losses. Their 11th final day between actual finals and replays since 1989. McManaman feeding it in here. Kicked forward by Flynn, overkicked, and Mannion couldn't get to it. Saved by David Clark from going out. Yeah, nothing between the terms. In terms of physicality, in terms of fitness, in terms of athleticism, both players evenly matched and a very evenly contested next couple of minutes. And Dermot O'Connor will be coming on very shortly, maybe to inject fresh life into that Mayo attack. Right now, it's his brother Killian who's trying to set up a scoring opportunity, brilliantly defended there. It was Cooper who got across to keep it away from Jason Doherty. Some really brilliant, valiant defending on both sides. Dermot Connolly will wait for the other Dermot to come on Brian Fenton leisurely stroke out to the left hand side carried on here by Con O'Callaghan McManaman out there as well a lot of work to do to turn the defender Keith Higgins he's done well Higgins gets back at him turned all the way back to Connolly once again into the path of Kean O'Sullivan 20 minutes to go yeah. out as far as McCarthy and this is what Dublin do well create space, create options and wait for the runner to come through at speed Mayo meanwhile have a couple of central defenders they're trying to choke things up in the middle but Dublin trying to break it and it's Keno, Keno Sullivan off fed beautifully oh, beautifully over the bar through Brian Fenton at the end of all of that yeah. Super point. And as I said, they were so willing to be patient on the ball, wait for the opportunity, wait for the runners, and that's the problem with Mayo. They're going to start to tire in the next couple of minutes. Well, off will go. Shami O'Shea, on comes Dermot O'Connor. Yeah, and Dermot has a lot to offer. Three goals and five points in the championship so far. Good man to get a goal, to lead one maybe. Shami O'Shea normally puts in a good 50 minutes, then he's normally replaced, and today it's Dermot O'Connor, who had been programmed to start. I mentioned that he has been suffering from hamstring trouble for quite a while now. DCU student, Keith Higgins, inside to Aidan O'Shea. Brendan Harrison now teeing it up here. Durkin holding on for dear life, feeding it outside eventually to the runner, Kevin McLaughlin. Dublin leading by two points. Mayo with just two points to show for the second half so far. They find it much more difficult in the second half. Dermot O'Connor getting possession. Referee blows his whistle. Free in for Mayo. Chance to take it back to a one-point game yet again. Yeah, great play by Jeremy O'Connor. Stephen Rashford would have sent him in. Make an impact. Do something. And he took on Brian Fenton. Won the free. Wasn't many other options on. Good play. He's played an awful lot of football, Desi. You know, last year he was the star of the under-21 success. This Mayo fan hoping all those years of misery will finally end. There's a great book by Keith Doggett called The House of Pain about the suffering that the Mayo fans and their team have had over the years. Hoping today will be their big day. Killian O'Connor kicking it and the umpire goes for the white flag and Stephen Rochford can yeah. realise that his side is back within a point yet again. Yeah, and Stephen Cluxton getting away all his kickouts now. I think Mayo have decided that too much energy has been spent trying to cover them kickouts and then it goes on. Onto it comes Dean Rock, giving it off here for Kevin McMenamin. 
and again there's a runner in the middle here it hasn't been picked up and it's James McCarthy it's easy it should be lovely score by James McCarthy but nobody had picked him up and nobody was running with him yeah and Aidan O'Shea has had a fine match so far probably starting to tire a little but James McCarthy found himself in lots of space and Dublin are starting to open up opportunities Dublin by two midway through the second half David Clark belting it down Paul Flynn jumping here but it's won by the other midfielder for Mayo Tom Parsons out via Jason Doherty Aidan O'Shea once again feeding it forward here for Killian O'Connor teasing ball inside here for Andy Moran but Simons is near him gives it in beautifully Keegan he scored again did it last year he's done it in the 2017 final Lee Keegan on 54 minutes steps up to put Mayo in front 112 to 111 Moran teed it up for him but Keegan finished it emphatically and we hadn't seen Lee Keegan for a long time but what a goal and what a finish great play by Andy Moore picked up the ball from Killian O'Connor and what a finish a timely reminder once again that you don't take this Mayo team for granted Chris Barrett feeds it back to Dermot O'Connor back outside to Aidan O'Shea once again it's McLaughlin coming forward to Raid holding it slipping it back outside to the younger of the O'Connor brothers Aidan O'Shea has time now deciding to have a go himself to do what he's never done before and score in an all-Ireland final but he's missed oh that was a bit of a reckless decision by Aidan O'Shea the big build-up yeah it was, he probably the male supporters it looked close but at the same time it was a high percentage wrist shot still 112 to 111 as you can see, we're in the 55th minute of the final. Fitzsimons, challenged by Andy Boran. Referee has blown his whistle. It's got to be a free for Dublin. Yeah. It's a bit of a blow, the concession of that goal. Things had been doing pretty nicely in the second half for Dublin. They were 1-5, remember, to uh, nine points down at half time. They scored six points in the second half, so another substitution coming in. And this time it's got to be Stephen Cohen. Colin Boyle again put in a good shift he's been quiet the last couple of minutes Stephen Paul coming in we like to see I think see Michael Darren McCauley warming up as well he's such a direct runner you know that he's going to run at the heart of this Mayo defence and of course they have Bernard Brogan and I'll take him as well for a couple of points any team anywhere would take Bernard Brogan Kieran Kilkenny on to Johnny Cooper yet again Fenton holding off the challenge of Doherty will come back once again get goal side James McCarthy kicked that marvellous point some time ago just before the Lee Keegan goal Kilkenny darting forward Doherty's trying to keep up with him gives it in towards McManaman gets his hands on the ball and releases it back out to Dean Rock quickly Connolly thought about the shot from some distance McLaughlin goes after him Parsons goes after him Keegan goes after him Referee says play away. I'm giving you an advantage. That's incredible. Connolly gets a mighty score. Inspirational score. Everybody was hitting on the Mayo team that couldn't stop him. Referee actually gave him an advantage. He looked at the referee and he says, I'll kick it over anyway, Joe. Just shows us what a great footballer this man is. Back come Mayo. Dermot O'Connor. Turning around into the clear, trying to get away from his marker slipping it to Chris Barrett taking over Jason Doherty McLaughlin normally good for a score or two how about that and what a time to get it second of the match yeah brilliant player one of my favourite players Kevin McLaughlin very unselfish very hard working and a brilliant player and a and, great finish there Ger. and very unheralded as well Desi yeah he hasn't actually won an all-star which I was surprised to read this week Keanu Sullivan 13 minutes from the finish plus the usual stoppage time and really it's impossible to separate these teams Kieran Kilkenny just about manages to get it across here to the very determined and flying Johnny Cooper remember it's 14 against 14 we've had two players sent off in this second half one per team Cooper again a bit more space 
great defending. O'Callaghan picks it up, however. Challenged by Harrison. Back out it comes once more. Rock trying to get in, and that's over the bar, is it? Referee has blown his whistle. Yeah, he gave the advantage, and I think Dean has knocked it over the bar, so it the is. floor is going to stand. But again, Keegan O'Callaghan, very effective, very strong. Dean on the line. They were looking for steps, the players, but... Yeah, good finish. Took his score well. It's five points for Dean Rock. Two of them in the second half from open play. And good work by the referee to allow that. Yeah, and I think Conor Callaghan's just gone down with maybe a bit of cramp. So level yet again, and they're level in this final for the ninth time. It's a remarkable final in so many respects. Everybody said, yeah, we think Mayo will put it up to Dublin. But I'm not sure everybody was convinced of that because Mayo have lost so many times. But they're giving it everything, and Dublin will not lie down. And Kevin McLaughlin comes yet again, ships it over. Moran makes the run to the right, trying to wrong foot Fitzsimons. Past Flynn, going back outside the D, onto his right. Oh, he's tired, picks. he's tired, and he had options. Andy Moran, a man of his experience, should have looked around him. Stephen Cohen, Kevin McLaughlin, they were all around him, and he took the opportunity himself on poor play. Keanu Sullivan from the kick out Brian Fenton lobbing it in here for Kilkenny to get there before Keegan interesting it's not Keegan picking up Connolly free taken by Kieran Kilkenny all the way down towards Conor Callaghan trying to turn his man who is Chris Barrett brilliant and play Barrett does well yeah brilliant play Conor Callaghan using his strength to try and manoeuvre an opportunity but Chris Barrett again outstanding today Stephen Cohen on here. Carrying it. Turning it to Aidan O'Shea. Tom Parsons once again. McLaughlin belting it in here to a two-man inside forward line. It's caught here by Killian O'Connor. And he hits it high, very high, but very accurate as well. He's got five. Yeah. And always the ball, the excellent ball in. That's what caught Philly McMahon out of position. And who had to expect Killian O'Connor, an easy score for him. And I think he's actually going to book Philly now for that as well. Mayo lead by one. Ten minutes to go in the 2017 All-Ireland Football Final. Yeah, and I think the introduction of players like Stephen Cohen and Jeremy O'Connor have made an impact for Mayo, and that's what they needed. Subs that can make an impression. Billy McMahon, yellow carded. Johnny Cooper. Well, the build-up was all about uh, the number of subs that Dublin have got and the quality of their bench and how that was going to make an impact late on into the game. But as you say, Desi, David O'Connor, Stephen Cohen have certainly made their presence felt. Brian Fenton now slipping it in here cleverly. O'Callaghan laying it off to Dean Rock. Trying to turn pass. Yeah, again, Chris Barrett. Again, it's Chris Barrett. Yeah. When we talk about unheralded players, you know, not a, all that terribly long ago, he wouldn't have been sure of his place in the starting 15. Yeah, a player who's taken off against Cork during the year, but he's been immense. Again, a player with no all star. He'd be in the running again this year. Dermot O'Connor doesn't worry about all stars. He's been a young footballer of the year twice in the past. He wants an All Ireland. He gives it to Keegan, who scored once already, struggling to get in Three. here. Referee. He's given a free jerk. Actually, does give a free. He had his hands raised. I thought he might have been allowing an advantage to him. And very so close. The chance. Very close to a penalty as well, sir. Not too terribly far away. That's yeah. certain. Have a look he, again here. There's the foul, but you can see it. There he is. He's pulled down. That and is inside. Isn't it's it? definitely inside. The initial contact may be made outside, but may all supporters would have preferred a penalty on that occasion. Well, they've travelled here yet again in their absolute thousands. Conor Loftus yeah. has got to come in very shortly. Yeah, and we know what he can do as a sub against Curry. Made a brilliant ball into Andy Moore for the goal against Sturry. Scored a goal himself and saved Mayo's season. So certainly you would say Mayo, if they knock this over, two-point lead, seven or eight minutes to go, it's a very strong position, Ger. Don't forget, Desi, the amount of time that's normally added on at the end of matches nowadays. Last year, it was seven minutes. Yeah, I don't know the Mayo supporters be able for that kind of injury time. 114 to 113 can now very quickly become a, a two-point advantage. Killian O'Connor has got five so far. Two of those have been from open play. He's now got four from Freeze. Yeah. 
115 to 113. On comes Loftus from Cross Molina. And off, going off the team, will be number 15, Andy Moran. Yeah, what a shift he's put in. Incredible standing ovation for Andy Moran. And that just gives you the measure how highly he's, he's seen three, in Mayo. Three points in the first half. Always the leader. Always involved. Wonderful character. Brilliant footballer. Yeah, and that ball he gave Lee Keegan was exceptional. Set him up for the goal. And he shows us all of the experience there. Now Dublin. What have you got left? Yeah, I'm just looking at Jim Gavin. He's talking to Jason Sherlock, and I'm sure, like Bernard Brogan, certainly would have made an impact now. You would have to imagine. Keen O'Sullivan. They've used three of their possible subs. Kieran Kilkenny. Johnny Cooper now. James McCarthy. It's only a two point game. Dublin won't panic. Looking today for their 27th All Ireland victory. They are looking for just their fourth. Inside to Paul Mannion. Again, the backs having the responsibility now, trying to keep him at bay. Mannion, elusive, quick, darting forward and squeezing it in from an almost impossible angle. That's Dublin for you. Never beaten. Back yeah. to a one point game. Absolutely. When you play like Paul Mannion, so elusive, took, taking on his man and they always get the score a lot of Mayo players are actually looking for a video referee on this occasion Killian O'Connor is screaming at Joe McCullen yeah and this could be this could be very interesting Jerk, because it's unusual for a referee to go back like this well also the uh, official the video official will have had a view of it already and might have had a doubt himself so this is important is it a one point game or a two point game it's uh, in, it's good. Posh Akadaha, it's allowed. Yeah, and that's the one thing about Dublin, they do not panic, they keep on coming back, great composure again. Bernard Brogan is in. Yeah, and that's no surprise. You're nearly guaranteed a score or two when this man comes onto the pitch. The fair who went off, by the way, is Paul Flynn. Possession by here. it's won by Dublin. It's back in once again to Mannion. He's got three so far. Into Bernard Brogan. Fed back as far as James McCarthy. Is it inside the right hand upright? It is. And the teams are level again. Yeah, and you can see, as we said, there's great composure there, but what play by Bernard Brogan. Simply got the ball, knew the option wasn't on, laid a great pass to James McCarthy. It really is a brilliant match. Aidan O'Shea. Physical, tough, but that's what you expect. Cohen gives it back to Lee Keegan. Goal scorer after 54 minutes. Chris Barrett having to uh, reel backwards here. And just begin the next attack for Mayo. Four minutes of the 70 to go. And then it'll be interesting. Just how many more minutes will be tagged on to that. Tom Parsons. Aidan O'Shea. Two men unmarked ahead of him. Stephen Cohen, one of them. Last year's under-21 captain. Beautifully in here to Loftus. Connor Loftus regained his control there. Little throw the shoulders past Kieran Kilkenny. Down he goes. Referee very near him. No foul committed. The referee decides into the breach. Here comes Durkin trying to lay it off once again towards Loftus. Everybody intent on winning it, and finally Dublin do get it back, and it's kicked out by Brian Fenton to the completely unmarked Dermot Connolly. Unmarked for a moment, that was. Slipping it over towards Dean Rock. The, Dol the Mayo back missed him, and Rock fists it over the bar. It's a six for Dean Rock. You can watch again here. The back came out, missed it completely. Rock had the composure then to slip it over the bar with his fist to put Dublin back into the lead again yeah Connor Loftus had opportunities to lay it off got caught in possession was so quickly up the pitch to Jamie Connolly Chris Barrett narrowly missed it and it found his way to Dean there was a great opportunity for a goal if he wanted to be a hero took the point in recent years Dublin have won All-Ireland Finals against Mayo by a point Mayo come once more Cohen inside to Killian O'Connor remember the equaliser last year that is incredible Jar. that is incredible score at this time of the game 
Killian O'Connor. Seven points for O'Connor. So reminiscent, but up at the other end of the field last year to tie it up. He's done it again here. They're level for the 11th time. What about that? 116 to 116. Yeah, no team deserves to lose this. Tit for tat throughout the game. Incredible composure from both sets of players. Now Scully is on, gets his chance, deserves it. Didn't start the match, and the player is going off as the goal scorer, Con O'Callaghan. Kieran Kilkenny. Johnny Cooper. So is it to be a late, late winner? Or will there be another day out for both these teams? Mac Bellavan. Got to make sure the business is done. Here and now. Back out here. Brogan running into challenges. Lots of challenges. Higgins fills away. Finally, flat kicked away out of danger by Paddy Durkin. Brilliantly taken by Kevin McLaughlin. Yeah, and what play by Keith Higgins to bottle up Bernard Brogan for a split second. He had an opportunity, but both set the players put their body on the lines, you'd have to say. We're seeing some magnificent performance. Absolute heroism all over the park. A final is a credit to both squads of players and their management teams, aided and abetted by the wonderful supporters we have at Grove Park this afternoon. An absolutely engrossing contest. It really is truly incredible how both sets of players at this level, at this stage of the game, can make such decisions. The decision has gone Mayo's way. The line ball, the possession, Cooper incensed. Yeah, to me it looked like it was a Dublin ball, so maybe that's a break Mayo needed. We're inside the last few seconds of the 70, as we see... Uh, the David Drake is in. Come on, David Drake. Yeah, powerful runner coming in for Jason Doherty. Very fit man. Some possession from the sideline here for Dermot O'Connor. Jason Doherty, the one making his way off. He scored two points in the first half and contributed handsomely. But now it's all about who's going to win. Yeah, it's a free in. A run here, and it is a, it's a free in, Charles. Oh, by Mick Fitzsimons. Yeah, off the ball. Mick Fitzsimons got too close to Killian O'Connor. I just seen it on the corner of my eye. Joe said it there. Huge call by Joe McQuillan to spot that. Pleading his case, Mick Fitzsimons. Just yeah. watch it again here. Just, Arm held. Yeah, just very slightly. But if we can remember Killian O'Connor very late in the game last year, missed a similar free from a similar position. And this is a big kick. Six minutes of added time, I've just been told. The crowd is now being told. Killian O'Connor at the beginning of those six minutes with the match level at 116 to 116. Yeah, and Michael Fitzsimons very close to him there. Joe McQuillan is well inside, not looking at it. As good a final as you could hope to wish to see. O'Connor making a better angle for himself. It's on the way, I think. Is it off the post? And comes back down to Brian Fenton. And Dublin can move smartly through the gears with Niall Scully. His first interventions is coming in. James McCarthy now. Dublin trying to bring the ball upfield and get the next score. Back once again here with Dermot Connolly. Turning away from Killian O'Connor after that free came off the post. And Dublin have the chance to benefit at the other end. It's Connolly. Mayo get the players back into key positions. Crucial four and a half minutes remaining here. Back out towards Mannion, who's got three points already. Off as far as Scully. Only one point in this year's championship. He scored it against Carlo. Keon O'Sullivan went down. Referee wasn't too far away from it, didn't see a foul committed. Fenton keeps it moving. Dublin patient. And they're looking for options. The best option possible. What is it? Will it be this man, Keon O'Sullivan? Will it be that man, Bernard Broga? With a little block on it by Keith Higgins. Yeah, and Keith wrecked. Higgins is on the ground. He can't walk. Somehow, yeah, cramped up. But he somehow managed to catch it and give the pass off to Killian O'Connor and keep it going. Both sets of players, I think, are pretty much out on their feet. Yeah, and the supporters willing on their players. There's another four minutes of it. Aidan O'Shea to Parsons. Will there be a winner today? And which one of them will it be? Chris Barrett. 
on it goes to Keegan. Cohen now worked inside. Barry was trying to get it. Stopped by McManaman. McManaman back there on the half back line doing the defending. Yeah, here comes Fenton. Connolly. Connolly, yeah. Getting away from Drake. Dermot Connolly. It'll take just one composed moment, you would think, for one of these teams to land the point that will win the final. Yeah, and a lot of players. I'm looking at Kira Kenny struggling from cramp. Paul Mannion struggling from cramp. Well, he takes his went down as well. Play. Here's James McCarthy. He looks fresh. He's got a gap. He's 25 minutes out, a little bit more. Back out to Connolly. Will Connolly be the man, be the hero? Not with this kick. It sailed well away. Yeah, and they're trying to regroup again. Yeah. <laughs> Romac Costello comes on, the man who broke Mayo Hearts last year with three points when he came on as a substitute, has another, what is it, about two and a half minutes to do the business with Mannion going off. Yeah, and he has fond memories of what happened last year. I'm sure he'd love to get on every ball if he can. You know he's going to get an opportunity to score. Such options that Jim Galvin has got. Right now, David Clark, I think, is just slowing it down. You can see it. He's in no particular hurry. So important, and uh, there is going to be another change. And Jerk Hafferke is going to get a chance to come in. I think uh, some of the players just cramping up and just unable to continue. Saw Keith Higgins there a moment ago. The other card was issued to number 12. Yeah, big kick out as well for David Clark. It's a full court press by Dublin. Now, Scully not long on and carded. It's kicked long. Dublin come to take, and James McCarthy brilliantly catches it. Are Dublin ready to take chance? Any chance that comes their way and sees the moment they've got this chance. Connolly fouled. Chris Barrett not deemed to have made the correct tackle, and it's a free kick from 40 metres out. To perhaps win the All Ireland. Yeah, to try to create an opportunity for Aidan O'Shea to go out on top of James McCarthy and it ended up James McCarthy won that kick out and count, creates a counter attack and then we have the players like the Jeremy Connolly were running straight at the heart of defence it's very hard to tackle that man off goes McLaughlin on comes Danny Kerbin really the most important thing right now as you can see we're under a minute of time to go uh, as Jerk Hafferke comes in but really it's all now about Dean Rock who scored six points in the match so far Keith Higgins going off to be replaced. A free kick to win the All-Ireland. Yeah, nice. Jim Gavin showing very few emotions. And I'm sure all kinds of emotions are running through Dean Rock's head. Eight. Playing in his 31st championship match. 27 years of age. His dad Barney did it many times in the past. This has to be the kick that goes over the bar if Dublin are to win the All-Ireland. It'll be heartbreak for Mayo. 116 to 116. Six minutes into stoppage time. 40 metres out. Rock kicking up into the air. And over the bar. And Dublin have surely won the All-Ireland. Yeah, what a player to have to kick the free. He's done it time and time before. Like his father, great composure and a great score. Well, the referee is halting play and having some words because uh, all kinds of bodies colliding, as you can see there. That's Cormac Costello being spoken to, and he's got a yellow card. He's only on a few seconds. Dublin bidding to hang on now. It'll be a kick out for Mayo, who looked to be crestfallen once again there's still a bit of jersey pulling and tugging going on but we're way over the six minutes as you can see a black card for Kieran Kilkenny a black card for Kilkenny yeah and under no circumstances was he letting Lee Keegan get away from that kick out and drag him to the ground off the ball how much more time will the referee add on yeah. he's added a minute he's in t it's, they always say it's at least whatever the yeah. number of minutes I, th I think he should give Mayo an opportunity because there's a lot of time wasted there will he do so Joe McCullen, the man in charge. Oh, David Clark has kicked it out to the sideline and out over the sideline, and it's a Dublin sideline ball. And most of the noise now is coming from the Dublin fans in Croke Park. 
Yeah, and it's just at the wrong time he hit a bad kick out. He'd be very disappointed with himself. Are they calling up? Uh, I thought for a minute they were going to call up Cluxton to kick this, but no, Bernard Brogan just going to kick it in. No need to do such things. Dublin hold on. Challenge there on Brogan. Very near the sideline. Mayo can't win the possession. So they give it all the way back here. Former Costello playing his part. Johnny Cooper as well. Dublin advancing. Dublin leading. Dublin holding possession. Frustrating Mayo, who played their part in a really good final. The referee looks at his watch in the middle of the park. Dublin dealt it all the way back to goalkeeper Stephen Cluxton and they hope that the whistle will sound in just a moment. Referee has another look at the watch. There's still a few seconds. Dublin just moving it around among themselves. Mayo can't win it back, however. Dublin have the advantage. They've got the ball. Time's running out. Cooper. They try to pin Keen O'Sullivan back there in the corner. Out comes Cluxton. Gives it off here to McManaman. Boots it out to Scully. Everybody was all down over at the 45 metre line, and the referee finally does blow the whistle. It's all over. Yeah. And Dublin are again the champions. The three in a row. The first time a team from Dublin has done it. Jim Gavin, you wouldn't think he had won a match. He said beforehand, it's just another game. But look what it means to the fans and to the players. Paddy Andrews in there to celebrate. But once again, defeat is Mayo's lot. Stephen Rochford and his team gave it absolutely everything. Luck just wasn't on their side at the very end of all of that. But it's Dublin who are the champions. It's a record of achievement that must be acknowledged. Final score, Dublin 117. Mayo 116. Some match. Yeah, incredible match, sir. Jim Gavin down there. He must be so proud of his players. What a bunch of players that he really has. Well, you would have to say Mayo put in an exceptional shift. But I think really we're one of, witnessing one of the greatest teams in GA history. They'll go for their four in a row next year and their five in the year after. But I think Jim Gavin has really amassed a special group of players. So much honesty in their squad, so much quality and so much composure. And the big plays today, they came up trumps once again. Well, it will always be remembered at the end as uh, the moment when Dean Rock, deep into stoppage time, nailed the free that came his way from 40 metres out. He had to do it, and he's so good at doing that. So good at doing that. Bayo so disappointed. That is six defeats now in 13 years. But for the victors, it's an afternoon to relish. The good times are continuing. And we go down now to join Joanne Cantwell. Dean Rock, congratulations. You must have nerves at steel, have you? Ah, look, just absolutely delighted. The ball went over the bar. Dermot did very well to win the free, and it's my job to put it over the bar, and thankfully it went over. He's getting plenty of congratulations here. I think you're the most congratulations person on the pitch. No surprise there, but what was going through your head? Because it wasn't any ordinary free. Ah, look, Chuck, as I said, it's my job to put the ball over the bar. I... Love, love being in those situations. Obviously, the league final, I learned from Mr. Kick last minute to get a draw. And thankfully, this time went over the bar, just struck it well, and uh, the rest is history now. We've seen you involved in some great All Ireland finals. This one looked particularly epic, was it, from your point of view? Yeah, look, it's a point in it again. Like when we come up against Mayo, there's always a point in it. Thankfully, we've been on the right side of it. It's just unfortunate for them that they've been on the wrong side of it, but they're a fantastic team. They work really, really hard. They bring out the best in us. And I'm sure it'll be the same next year again. you made lots of history. How big is it to do three in a row? Look, it's, it's a dream come true to win one. To win three, four. Some lads win a five. It's just incredible. Um, it's just all down to the hard work that everyone puts in. From the backroom team to the players to guys who didn't make the panel today. They're up in the stands. It's, this is for them. It always helps when you get somebody who can hold their nerve and stick the ball over the bar like that. Well done, Dean Rock. Well, Dean Rock, nonplussed by the whole thing, just doing his job, but he did it so methodically, so brilliantly. David Connolly came on, made a big, big difference as well. The good times are continuing for Dublin. There's Bernard Dunn down there. Lee Keegan, a tear in the eyes, you can see that. Great goal after 54 minutes. At that stage, you thought 
the uh, pendulum was slipping in Mayo's favour, but it wasn't to be. And who knows when and how the uh, good times will end for these great Dublin players. Once again, Stephen Cluxton is ready to climb up those 34 steps, I was told, to receive that trophy. And make no mistake, the Dubs have taken nothing for granted. They worked extremely hard for their success. They prepared diligently, cheered on by vociferous fans. It's their fifth All-Ireland win, of course, since 2011. And their fans are rightly, immensely proud of them. A great day. In a way, Desi, it was the match of the championship. Yeah, it truly was an incredible occasion today. Great to be here to witness it. Uh, Jim Gavin deserves massive credit uh, he introduced nine starters from the 2006 team so he's always introducing new blood they're a very honest squad them Dublin players to show so much respect every player of the Dublin team went down to the Mayo players to show and acknowledge the massive performance that they put in as well Mayo will be so heartbroken and I think so many people all over this country and all over the world will share that heartbreak with them uh, I can think of uh, one Dublin fan, however, Willie Fitzpatrick, who's not too well and he's living in Brisbane and he's been watching this, and a Dublin fan, and I think he's going to enjoy the afternoon. And I'm told that in Thailand, the GAA there, who are going to have their Asian Championships in uh, November, have all been watching it as well. An awful lot of Dublin fans, and uh, John Costello there, just embracing Dean Rock, his, his dad, of course, uh, the father of uh, Cormac Costello. Well, Michael, we've certainly enjoyed it here. I hope the panel have enjoyed it as well. Dublin by one, Dublin the champions. Sure, Kelly, thank you very much indeed. There is absolutely no doubt that we enjoyed it in here. What a game of football, what drama. Did we expect anything else? Just looking out here, by the way, onto the pitch, the crowd is remaining in place pretty much. 90% of the crowd haven't actually moved yet. Now, you'd say, OK, the Dubs weren't going to move, but the Mayo fans are staying as well. I think people are just trying to take in what they have just seen here this afternoon in uh, Croke Park. You're spot That's on. You're spot on, because we're... We're punch drunk, we're absorbed, we, we are trying to take it in because we saw an absolute brilliant sporting contest. Some heroic displays, twists, turns, but gee, Michael, and, and to the victor, the spiles, and the yep. victor's right to history, and the dogs, in the end, eat out a victory and deserved it. But gee, my hat goes out for Mayo. It's 11 all out and finals they've lost. I think this, and Joe was saying it earlier on, I think this is going to be the hardest pill to take. This was a game there for the taking. I don't know what I can say to the, peop the players, the people of Mayo. They died with their boots on, they gave it their all. But the better team, probably this on the is, day, still this won. Is it's a very unusual one, cruel. Alan Bork, because obviously we, we should and yeah. do congratulate do. the Dubs. Yes. This is the first oh. three in a row for 30 years. Yeah. What a fantastic performance. Yeah. And yet, of course, as Pat said, you cannot but feel uh, sorry for Mayo. Well, Dublin are a wonderful team. Yes. And they play with the right attitude and they go about their business always in the proper way. And they won the game playing good football. Yeah. They had to score a series of good points in the last 10 minutes to win the match. And we should never lose sight of that. Yeah. Despite the fact that, I suppose, the sympathy of the world goes out to Mayo and the way that they play with hero heroes. Yeah from start to finish and great individual displays like oftentimes you come to Pro Park and we all have to perform yeah. but they performed yeah. close to their absolute yeah. maximum today and at times had I think Dublin in serious trouble but Dublin just were able to bring on good subs they had a bit of yeah. composure and they just I don't think there was anything in it I'd love if we were coming back for a replay yeah. You couldn't see, Joel, much more that Mayo could have done to win that match No, and that's why Pause to see the sick of yeah, that's it. But that's that's why that's why today is Michael. And today's is the worst. This is the worst of them because with five minutes to go, you would have said, "Look, we all look like the team that are going to win this." What a terrific one! I am delighted not to accept this cup on behalf of the senior Dublin football team. This all Ireland means so much to this team, and I would like to thank the officers of Crow Park for organising the competition. I would like to congratulate Mayo on a fine game today. We've got nothing but respect for you guys. You're a phenomenal team. We come back year after year. The consistency is unbelievable, and we have the utmost respect for you guys. Just thanks just so much for pushing us to the pin of our collar. Thank you.
I'd like to thank AIG for their sponsorship of the Dublin GAA and to our partners who supported us, we all value. To the officers of the County Board and the staff in Parnell Park, thank you for your support for the team and for your tireless work to promote Gaelic games in Dublin. To Jim, the management team, the backroom team, many thanks to your leadership and guidance throughout the year. We wouldn't be here without you, that's for sure. <laughs> to the players themselves, their determination, self-sacrifice and commitment to the county has led you to this All-Ireland title, so well done, guys. To our families, I'd like to thank you for your unrelenting support, encouragement and loyalty throughout the year. And finally, to our fantastic supporters. You travel the country with us. You're always there, no matter where we are, a born Cup, League, or indeed the Championship, you're always beside us. So we uh, just are so grateful for your support. Thank you, guys. So, I, you know, in other sports, as uh, if you win a trophy three times, you actually get to keep it. I don't know if he gets to keep the Sam McGuire, but uh, three times. Just in a before row. Joe talks, can we just credit him? He's the first captain to captain either an All Ireland winning football team or an All Ireland winning hurling team. Four, four, uh, four times. occasions. Yeah. What, yeah. A four occasions now, but, uh, what a record. I think, yeah. I think we couldn't pass this occasion by saying that the man beside me. Played in two, three in a row teams. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they've got, they've got a bit to go yet. Plus, plus the next target. But I mean, it, that, that was the most savage loss today because, as Pat said, Mayo did everything that yeah. could possibly be done. And coming down the street, whenever Keegan got the goal, you would have said to yourself, look, the, the atmosphere after Chris Barrett's two wonderful interceptions. Yeah. And, and, oh. and, and then when Killian O'Connor got the chance to win it with the free out at the left side, I thought to myself, he's going to take it. And yet, and yet, in the end, what does it come down to? That we, we must accept that and the Dubs are one of the greatest teams ever to have played and, the game. And you're right, Johan, that's the hallmark of a great champion to dig out a victory like that when, 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 when they face adversity. And just what, on another They launched themselves ferociously on, at that point. And on another record, uh, 11 Dublin players have now won five All Ireland medals. They're the first players outside of Kerry to ever have five All Ireland medals. Is that, is which, that right? is, which is some achievement. Mm -hmm. And they are a remarkable team. Uh, we are privileged to watch them. Great ambassadors for the sport, great players, great management. But I mean, standing up to that Mayo challenge today, like they were absolutely oh. at the pin of their colour. And psychologically, no matter how humble you are, no matter how strong the togetherness ethic is in the group, there comes a point when most teams will crack under that extreme pressure and the fact that they didn't and the, I mean three of their scores in the second half Michael one from Dermot Connolly one from Mannion and, and Dean Roxfist were three of the best points I've ever seen and that's how good they had to be to come through I this. suppose at the end of the day in the finish line in sight Dublin had the composure Mayo with the finish line in sight yet again panicked a little bit let's go down to Joanne she's with James McCarthy Congratulations. I've never seen so many players at the end of the match absolutely out on their feet. Was it particularly hard out there? I, I, I never played in the game. It was so tough to go. It was, it was just end to end and, and the hitting and the, the tackling and the running. I was just I'm exhausted. But I'm very happy. But even if you look at the midfield battle, because it, in the first half it appeared that Mayo were actually getting on top, but you just came out in the second half. Did you feel like you'd really had one of the, the halves of your life there? Yeah, we, we were under a lot of caution the first half and and Mayo probably should have been a couple of more scores ahead than they were, and we just hung in there. And we got in at half time. We just said, we, have not, we, we don't want to have no regrets, basically. We came out, we just gave everything we had, and it was, it was the victory. Obviously, having the experience of being there, done that, does help a lot. But when Mayo were just edging that bit ahead uh, towards the end, did doubts ever cross your mind when you're playing with these players? No, never. Like, we're, we're, we're so tight as a group. We've been together for so long now. And, and, we really back each other up to the hilt, and we, we never. If, if I don't step up one day, someone else will step up, or Keenan Sloven will step up, or someone else. And that's, that was the biggest strength of our team, is, is, is the collective. And I'm just, I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words.
It's so obvious your loss for Mars. Is it just the specialness of this team, the specialness of doing three in a row? Well, it's, we, we have a really special team, and I can't believe we've done, we've done three in a row, so I'm just I'm so happy. I see a few celebrations going on at the hill. I should probably let you be part of it. Just to say thanks to Dean Rock as well. Well done, James. The Dublin players go to the hill, of course, and the boys are back in town. Belts out over the public address here, not for the first time, when Dublin have played and won in Croke Park. More on today's All-Ireland Football Final coming up right after these.
Super Valley are behind the ball, from hundreds of grassroots clubs to the GAA Senior Football Championship. Back here at Croke Park, we are reflecting on Dublin's win of the 2017 All-Ireland Football Final. They have completed a hat-trick of All-Ireland titles after a 117 to 116 win over Mayo. And Colm O'Rourke, that single point was scored by Dean Rock at the end of the match. Now, if this was the second round of the league or something like that, this would be fairly straightforward. In this situation, under this pressure, it took nerve. Let's look at the, the, the free as it was won in the first case. Yeah, well, of course, Dermot Connolly takes on the defence and Chris Barrett, who had a brilliant game all through, comes out and meets him and... Not much he could have done about it. No. In a way, I told him to his, his, his no, right, he, high tackle, Joe McQuillan, who did a very good job, I think, in refereeing the game. Mm -hmm. But Dean Rock, that's why he's been on the Dublin team now for the last five or six years. That's why he's the top scorer for Dublin almost every but, year. Because he is cool under pressure, like the rest of the Dublin. And he hadn't a great game but, in free taking, but no, was better from the so, so, But in fairness, in fairness, Colm, he redeemed himself there because I thought that the turning point was when he was clean through on goal and he thought of oh, fisted over the bar instead of putting it in the net and finishing the game and I thought at that stage Mayor were going to win mm. this mm. and then you had Killian O'Connor's free and then you had the, the, the incredible yeah, kick there was, there was so stick out over the sideline oh, yeah, that that stage, was, yeah. all he had to do was hold possession yeah. and of course they were a man up because of the black card mm. and he had men running for quite a while yeah, yeah. and that's the difference in the end you have got to go and take these victories Mayo have been here before there were mentally so many, you have to be strong enough yeah, to go and so take the victory there were so many talking points in the match from both sides right, I suppose Pats Milan. Mayo had a goal chance in the second half now I know <laughs> Dublin had a goal chance as well and I know Lee Keegan scored a very good goal but these are the things that yeah. you look back on and say, this, yeah, Jason Doherty had a very good goal chance being put through by Andy Morton, who had another absolute brilliant game. game today. I think if there was anything he did, now great he save by Cluxton, not only he kicked it straight at him, but I think he kicked it just at a, a lovely, comfortable height for Cluxton to deal with. Should have gone in. In that situation, like they say, you pass the ball into the net, you stroke it along the ground, and you go near post, and you, you don't near, kick across. You stroke it high and hard. Who knows? But you know, at the end of the day, Michael, I, I, I've mentioned two words all the time about Dublin. What makes Dublin so great? Composure and decision making. And when they came down. That's three the, words. Composure, you're right. Composure and decision making. When they came down the final stretch today, winning line in sight, Mayo didn't have the composure. Mayo's decision making was poor. The Dub's composure. I'm not the sure, Pat, I'm not, Pat, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not, no, I, I disagree with I, that. I, I, I thought that throughout this game, game, Mayo played heroically. And then there were two mistakes at the end. Two mistakes. But aside from no, that, there was. I thought Mayo were magnificent. Yes, yeah, there was. That's all fine. But Colm O'Rourke, oh. there was a goal conceded right at the start of the match by Mayo. Yeah. We cannot leave this out. They lost it's once again goal, got out of the final goal. by a yes. point. And this has been sort of standard practice with Mayo. Give away the goals early on. They did it last year as well. But it was a fantastic finish oh, by Conor Callan. But again, it showed the resilience of Mayo to come back. This was probably Mayo's greatest performance. Of course. And yet they have gone away with yeah. nothing from it. it. In the end of the day, like whether Dublin won or lost today, the Dublin juggernaut would continue. But it would have been important for the healthy Gaelic football outside because a lot of people will be saying to themselves, how can we stop Dublin now? They're getting better and better. But you yeah. say, Colin, they, came, they come away with nothing. I disagree entirely with that. They came away with honour and glory. Oh, no. and they That's no good to these no. players. No, 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 I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. But I tell you what, for the Gaelic football in public, to see that inspiring us as to how this game can be played. Yeah. When we've watched some of the draws we've had yeah. to watch in Blanket the Fenton over the last six years, Let's I see. disagree with you. That no. was an occasion that every was, neutral no. could save her. Of course, I mean, that's an example of how the game should be played. Because joining us right now here with Croke Park is a man who knows all about winning all Ireland's in Croke Park. It is Kerry's Colum Cooper. Hello, Colum. How's the form? Good, guys. Good. What a, what a match. I know. Listen, you've heard, I'm sure, what the lads have been saying here. You've been down a bit closer to the action down there. What did you make of it? 
Yeah, look, it was a fantastic game of football. It had everything, goals, black cards, red cards, yellow cards, excitement to the dish. Um, when I look back at the game, Mayo did so much right, yeah. but just couldn't get, couldn't get over the line again. And it's happened to them in the past, but they played heroically. Chris Barrett turning over ball, goal from Lee Keegan. Everything was stacked in their favour today, but in fairness to the Dublin, not at their best, but they, they were able to bring it out and they, they're goiled, they're goiled, they got them over the line, I think. And I suppose as a player, you know all about this. What? Where does this leave this Mayo team now? Look, they're an amazing team. They keep coming back. I questioned them during the summer. How could they, how could they keep going? How many times can they go to the well? I heard Colin mentioning hard luck stories are no good to this team. They need to land in All Ireland and that's they're going to leave here. How can they pick up the pieces again? But they always do. It's going to be really, really tough for a few months for these players. Um, they've given everything today. They've given everything all year. Um, and again, they just come up that little bit short. 20, sure. 20 yeah. points to beat the Dubs. And they just come, got, they just got the 19. All right, Colin, thanks very much indeed for that. And in actual fact, let's hear from the Mayo manager, Stephen Rochford. And he's with Joanne. Stephen, hard luck once again. I know your players have been through this, unfortunately, on quite a few occasions. Is it particularly tough in there? Is it, this a particularly hard one to take? And they're all very difficult to take. <coughs> Too many of them now at this stage, but um, it is what it is. Um, you know, sport, sport can be tough and cruel, but today is about Dublin and congratulations to them. Three in a row is phenomenal in the modern era, and you know, we'll, I suppose we'll, we, we'll do our best to, to, to sort of resurrect over the, the winter and see where we go from next year. Sometimes you look back at games and I think you think, what else could I have done differently? Are there even those thoughts now? I mean, did, did your players give everything they possibly could today? Oh, I think so. I mean, look, winning score kicked in the 76th minute. You know, we've, we've a free earlier on and we hit the post with it. You know, it's just fine margins. And, but look, you know, it is what it is. Um, I couldn't ask for any more of the lads. You know, to a man, they, you know, the, the saying they died with their boots on and, you know, just couldn't be more proud of them. If you pick out key moments, and there were a number of, number of key moments in there, when Donny Vaughan got sent off and it, Dublin were going to be reduced to 14 anyway, how big a difference do you think that that ultimately had on the outcome? Oh, I don't know. Um, look, if we had had an extra man, you know, we can speculate now, but look, it, it isn't today. It's about, you know, we've come second and it's about Dublin and fair produce, Jim and, and, and Stephen, and congratulations to them. We've already heard the, the questions of, oh, can Mayo go to the well once again? We hear this every single year. What about the character of those men in there and that dressing that you've left who do come back no matter how many times they're written off? Yeah, they do. Um, you know, they have you know, they have the same hunger as Dublin have to win. Um, but we've just, become, we've just come out the wrong side of results on maybe too many times for our liking. But again, as I've already said, it's, you know, sport is cruel and... You know, the, the 2018 championship won't be long coming around and, you know, it's a bit hard to think about now. And, but, you know, I've no doubt Mayo are we're, we're very proud football people and, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to, you know, move into the National League in due course and uh, have no doubt we'll, um, you know, we'll circle the wagons and, and, and give something a rattle next year. Stephen, thank you for a thrilling summer. Thank you. Yeah, thanks indeed to Stephen Rocher. That cannot be easy, obviously. And another thing about Spillane that's not going to be easy is I can't even begin to think what the Mayo players are going to feel like tomorrow when morning, they wake yeah. up tomorrow morning and realise they've lost the other. I don't know, because you're right. I mean, Joe, to talk, Joe talks about their... It has taken us 61 championship games to get us to this day. And like the roulette wheel, where it stops, nobody knows. Well, now, any discussion of Mayo football inevitably leads to a discussion of just why it has been so long since they lifted the Sam Maguire. So, in an attempt to shed some new light on this, we caught up with a few people with an insight into that Mayo mindset. We're all agreed the curse thing is, is nonsense. So the question then is, why hasn't, it, why hasn't it happened? Well, I suppose it's just that it is so hard to get over the line after such a long time, you know. Mm. I mean, mm. when, when it is so long, you have to be just definitely more better. Yeah. yeah, you have to be better. What's your sense, Connor? The best team on, on the day generally wins All-Ireland, and I think Mayo, I think Bar 96, have been beaten by, by better teams on the day. Maybe not 
you know, you look at 15 and 15 in my own way, the better players. But mm. on the actual day, in regards to performance and and not making as many mistakes as the opposing team, I think that's what's probably caught us. Back to our time in 85, you came down from Offaly with, with, with two all Ireland medals at that stage. And what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you recall <laughs> about the, those mad years? I, I, I was actually flabbergasted yeah. that, that they were so good and so... And, and they felt then that they that they, they were going to get beaten in Connacht, you know. I said to myself, sure, why, why would you? Mm. I mean, you had everything going for you. And I said it to you at the time, if we had awfully jerseys on these, we win all Ireland's every year. Mm. There's, a, there's a very thin line between the confidence and arrogance, mm. but awfully never lost a run of themselves. Mm. But, yeah. but at the same time, I thought Mayo were the opposite. Mayo looked confident, but they weren't. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I, and I, you I, would I, concur I, with that? Yeah, totally. It's, oh. it's compared to my, my team... Uh, uh, and, and Sean's team and your team, Connor, like yeah. they're miles ahead of us, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. they, in, in all respects. And the yeah. only thing, the only thing that they don't have to crown it off is, is, is the cup and, and the medal. And, uh, mm -hmm. and there can be no sense that they're not going to get off a close. Their mental resolve is, you know, it's well, there. It's there for everybody. Look, to the see. Quality, they're, different, they're a different group. I think so. The yeah. quality is in, in there in the squad, mm -hmm. and they know that. that yeah. You know, they'll know if they perform. Mm -hmm. They've. A lot better chance than maybe we would have had in 04 and 06 of winning dollar. Yeah. I think I think it's a lovely place to be. Yeah. You know, I, I used to love this. I used yeah. to love this. Surf it and enjoy it. Oh, exactly. Surf it and enjoy it. And as well as that, you're so fit and you're so good mentally and physically. Bring it on. You know